All right. We are back with more great Ace Attorney. It has been what? I want to say it's been like, what, two weeks? It feels like two weeks anyways. All right. So, it's been two weeks since I did this. At least I think it has. Um... I don't even fucking I'm I don't I'm not even sure if I'd a, I want to try to do like a like a last time on you know I'll try my best let's see last time on Great Ace Turning where we left off I believe Holmes got shot trying to stop a robbery in Windy Banks which is a fucking kind of a pawn shot a pawn brokery something like that I honestly don't remember. <laughs> But he got shot. I believe, um, what's her face? Miss Lestrade. I forgot her first name. I'm, I'm gonna be honest, I really did. She's getting framed for it. Mr. Winnie Banks is the one that got shot. He's dead. He's the guy that, the, the guy that kept pointing a gun at his own head. So, kind of surprised that, you know, <laughs> well, not really. Not really surprised that that happened to him. It was gonna happen sooner or later, either by his own hand or by someone else's. Um, so, Miss Lashrod got, a uh, fucking arrested for that. She's being framed for that. Some Chad Wellington-looking motherfucker showed up and was all like, Hey, man, you're trying to steal a coat that belongs to me that actually belongs to Mr. McGilded or whatever, and it had a gold disc inside of it. Apparently, the gold disc is important for some reason. Um, we also found out that What's-Her-Face, uh, Holmes' little mini-me, her father was, um, well, we got hard evidence now that her father was Mr. Wilson. I believe I deduced that at some point earlier in the story. And also, Mikotoba has to go home because her father has fallen ill. So we are mikotoba in this, uh, in this endeavor this time around. So, yeah, lots going on. Hey, Breezy, how's it going? Hope everything's well. So... All that, troubles, and more in the next installment of The Great Ace Attorney. Let us go, let us continue. Yay, it's been a while. And also, my PC, hopefully, it has learned its lesson since I tuck its ass outside and roughed it up a bit. Uh, by that I mean I opened the bitch up and I threw a SSD in there. And hopefully, um, the stream won't ever have any more hiccups like it was having the past couple of weeks because um my disk drive kept getting full for some stupid reason. I also found out that part of that reason was because Windows Windows 10 fucking sucks like it always does. And it kept trying to update in the background despite the fact that every time it tried to update, it would tell me I don't have the files necessary to update it. Which how the fuck do I not have the files necessary to update it? I never deleted anything from Windows besides Microsoft Edge. I never deleted anything from Windows that was like kind of there by default. You know, just kind of disabled it here and there. Never deleted it though. So I don't know how I'm missing any files for that. I'll have to check that out. But hey, Windows sucks. But even though it sucks, it's still better than Apple or Linux. <laughs> As a wise person once said, I am glass case of emotion. I, I am glass case of emotion. Why did I say it like that? I am a glass case of emotion. But for, uh, but for good news, I passed my courses. C's really do get degrees. Of course they do. That's all that matters. You get the paper in your hand. You get the paper in your hand that says that, hey, man, some old fucking dinosaur who doesn't use the internet nowadays is telling me that I'm, I'm smart enough, I guess. Right? He gave me the paper with my name on it. Has a little stamp. Cool. <laughs> and now people will take me seriously somewhat, I guess. Anyways, 16th of April. One, I feel very weird right now because A, haven't streamed in two weeks. B, uh, I, did a, I recorded a session earlier of uh, Hey You Pikachu, which is going to be going up on the channel sometime this week. So right now, my N64 is staring me right in the face, and I feel like I have no room. Anyways, 16th of April, 1.26 p.m., Winnie Bang's Pawn Brokery. Here we are again at the scene of the crime. Uh, now to trust these representation papers in Gregson's face. Now to trust? My bad. Not a th it already begins. I already can't read. 
Now to thrust these representation papers in Gregson's face and see what he makes of them. Hello again, Inspector. Oh, Inspector. I love you so. Do you have a minute, please? What is it now? You should go home and get some rest. Iris, that's your name. Why do I keep forgetting your name? It's not that hard of a name to remember. Maybe because you just don't stand out too much for me, even though she's supposed to. <laughs> Here you go, Greg Z. Here are the representation peppers. Your ladyship. Wait, didn't I do this already? I don't believe it. How the devil did you get the how the devil did you get the stubborn little ragabash to sign that? Oh yeah, no, this is for um my bad, I'm sorry, representation papers. These are for um Lestrade. I salute you. That is good work, that is. I can see you've been very busy here as well. How about some tea? It's a special blend designed to relieve fatigue. Just chugging it down. Ah, lovely. Well, let's see now. Yes, yes, I hardly feel tired at all. I'm fit as a fiddle, your ladyship. Would it be alright if we investigate the scene of the crime then? Do as you please! You know where it happened? Through that door behind the counter. Yes, the storeroom. That's where I discovered Mr. Wendy Banks and Gina. Right. Well, I'll be getting back to business then. Will you be investigating the storeroom as well, Inspector? Will you meet me in the back room, Inspector? <laughs> if I'm perfectly honest, we need to wrap this up before long. Can't afford to spend too much time on this. So people can message or vent a bit on Twitter? Yeah, go ahead. It may take me a little a little time to reply, but yeah, go ahead. It's open. It's always open. But there are so many articles to go through. It's taking forever, even with the lads working around the clock. You want to see a vent happen for a quick moment, you can check my Twitter and just find the tweet where I'm basically just cursing the gods that Windows 10 exists. Which is a problem because there's another case that yard that the yard needs to investigate urgently. That must be what Lord Strongheart meant by far more serious matters before. So what I'm saying is, don't get under my feet, Sunshine. <laughs> you need to download Twitter first. <laughs> uh, come then, let us not waste any time. Yeah, I'm not, honestly, I'm not that big of a social media person, for the most part, which is probably why I suck at, what, what sort of I'm looking for? I suck at, uh, self-promoting, I guess? I don't fucking know. Where, we live in the days now where the honest, uh, we're like, wow, calling myself honest sounds dishonest, wow, I fuck it. It's like when someone calls himself humble, and you're like, you can't call yourself humble, that's not a descriptor you can use for yourself, who the fuck, what? <laughs> Yeah, but it's like nowadays where like someone who's honestly just like, hey guys, you want to check out my shit, right? Nowadays that doesn't get anyone anywhere. Why the fuck do I keep clicking on move? Stop it. Stop it, brain. Now you just got to yell to the heavens and be like, guys, make sure you follow me on Instagram and Snapchat. Trust me, I'll follow you back. I'm your best friend. I'm totally not doing it for clout. Check me out on Tic Tac. You know, that uh, app that used to be known as Musical.ly, where where unage, uh, where underage children would shake their ass in front of the camera, and then Musical.ly said, "Oh shit, we don't want to be, we don't want to get in trouble for that, so let's rebrand ourselves to TikTok." People seem to forget that that was a thing. <laughs> yes, it's really strange, isn't it? I mean, who would buy the horse statue, for example? I didn't mean to click on the horse statue. I meant to. Uh, Actually, check the other side. Well, sometimes you need, uh, you can find some real treasures among all the junk, you know? Are you alright, Runa? Oh, it's just, well, looks like a collection of useless junk as a whole. But when you pick it out and when you pick out individual things, you can't help wishing you owned them, even the horse statue. That's exactly how the poem broker works. They're very clear, clever. Hmm, they are. 
like me this past week where I was just in the store and I was like, you know what? You know what? I can... Is there like a... Okay, I thought I would have to like, you know... Guess I gotta examine the back room to go to the back room, yeah? Okay, there we go. If I promote myself, people would see a tumbleweed move by on my page. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Fucking... Nowadays, it's so weird to promote yourself, except especially when you're beginning, because people look at you and they're like, Oh, how dare you promote yourself? You think you have clout or something? You don't even have a million kajillion views. And you're like, wow, that's crazy. I remember, um, one of the things that I fucking hate, which I'll probably talk about, um, like, once this playthrough is over, is, uh, there's a video, there's a handful of videos on my channel, um, Handful? Two? Maybe? I don't fucking know. But there's videos on my channel where, like, uh, early days of my channel, I was bored, and I was like, you know what? I'll just put a little video here because I feel like doing it. At the time, I liked My Hero Academia. Now it's like, what if I, what if I just take characters from it and just pair them to, like, Disney songs? I think that would be fun. And then fucking, uh, of course, it blows up because it's My Hero at the time My Hero was hot, I guess, or was getting hot. And then it's also Disney, so it so videos blown up and people are like, oh my god, when are you gonna do the next one? And I'm like, I'm like, I really don't want to. I don't think you guys realize that I I stayed up like, like all the way to four in the morning making this shit, even though it seems very simple to do. Um, it was very time consuming because unlike everyone who just like looks at the character and slaps something on it, I looked at like, I looked at the lyrics of each song and all that other bullshit. Um, and then like. You know, and I'm like, yeah, I put, I'm not going to say I worked hard on it, but I, I put a little something into it. And then, you know, everyone's all like, man, you should just keep doing stuff like this. This seems to get views. And it's like, yeah, but it's also fucking heavily copyrighted. And what really sucks is that most of the people who watch that don't even watch any of my other shit. So who cares? Why would I cater to you if you don't care? <laughs> if you come with add to it, like... Man, why you keep trying to do all this other shit? You should just continue with this stuff. I remember someone actually commented that, and I was like, dude, you can literally just make your own if you really want to. It's not that hard. I'm going to delete those videos one day, and then my view count on my channel is going to go way the fuck down. <laughs> it's a story room, isn't it? That's why. That's what Gregson said. So. Mikotoba, you're still here? I thought you left. Yes, and that's where I saw the dreadful scene last night. Though, so, uh, through the little window in the door. Mr. Winnie Banks, face down on the floor, with Gina beside him. As the accused legal's representative, you have the right to examine the scene, Mr. Naruhoto. I do. We want to make a thorough investigation. Yes, of course. And we will! Behind that door? That's... that's the real scene of the crime. Don't worry. If there's any clues in there, I'll find them. Now will you? Hmm. Well, let's... let's go in there. Do I... fast travel there now? Okay, we do. Alright. Then why do I have to- why do I have to examine the door to be able to fast travel there? It's a fucking door. <laughs> 16th of April, the back room. Storage room. Yo, that chest is open back there. Poor Iris. She clammed up completely. Well, she is still a child. Iris is bound to find this difficult. After all, Mr. Winniebake's life was taken in the very room only last night. Why do I feel like she doesn't care about that? Well, maybe doesn't care is a strong word. I feel like in two seconds she's gonna be like, they stole my manuscripts. Hey, Gregson. What, what the fuck was that about? Wait, Inspector! <laughs> Come back here, what was that about? What is it now, Sunshine? You took one look at me and tried to run away. What the fuck was that about? You think a Scotland Yard inspector will run away from some jumped up little defense lawyer, do you? Maybe. Maybe a little bit. I just... well... 
never seen her ladyship looking like this before. It's a thing. I don't know what to say to her. So, you were running away from- you weren't running away from me, you were running away from a ten-year-old. Sounds about right. I'm afraid this is all a little much for young Iris. Some gentle reassurance might go a long way, perhaps, Inspector? Uh, sure. Um, <coughs> Don't, uh, don't trouble yourself unduly, your ladyship. I mean, at least you're not dead, are you? <laughs> what is this, Yosuke time? At least your mom isn't dead or anything. Yosuke, what? <laughs> I don't think that went very well. Wow, Gregson, you are, you are the worst. Look. I'm in the middle of an investigation here, Sunshine, and I told you not to get under my feet. You're the one who came in here. And we have investigating to do ourselves. Yes. I'd like to hear more of what the socially inept inspector has to say. Oh, Hurley. And inquire into how Mr. Sloan's operation is going. Alright. I guess I'll, you know, just talk with him. Let's see, the scene of the crime. What do we got to go over here? So, Inspector. Oh, Inspector. What do you... You know what I really miss? I miss Inspector, uh... Basonaga. I wonder what the fuck happened to him. Did he go back to Japan? Because I thought he was, like, on his way here. Why, why was he on his way here? Now that I remember. Wasn't he, like, supposed to keep an eye on someone? Was that Cosmo? Was he supposed to keep an eye on Cosmo and now Cosmo's dead so he just peaced out? <laughs> so, Inspector, what do you make of the crime scene? Pshaw, you got eyes, haven't you? Use them. If it's what it looks like, nothing more, nothing less. Alright. Iris, could you lend me a hand here? So, Gregsy, what do you make of the crime scene here? Oh, yes, your ladyship. Do allow me to humbly explain. Last night, a short, shortly after the hour of 1 o'clock in the morning, Scotland Yard police attend, attended the scene. The one and only door to the storeroom was found locked from the inside. So, it was locked from the inside. The lock appears to be broken now, though. Was the police officer, was that the police officer's doing? Quite right, ma'am, quite right. We took the liberty of smashing the door in as humbly as possible, dude. If there's any emergency and you call any emergency number, they will find any excuse to just smash a fucking door in. Like, not just the police, but also, like, the fucking firefighters and, hell, even the paramedics sometime. Well, the paramedics are more delicate because they're all volunteers. But still, it's like, I remember sometimes I had to talk to, like, fire marshals and shit, and they're like, Alright, you're saying that there might be a gas leak in there? I'm like, yeah, it might be. And they're like, okay, so, uh, where's the manager at to to unlock the door. I'm like, the manager's on their way. They'll be here in like two seconds. They're like, we don't have time for that. I'm like, what do you mean we don't have time for that? Literally no one else is in that building. <laughs> I know nobody else is in that building because fucking I locked the building myself. <laughs> Hand the key over to the manager. And they're like, we're going in. We're going to have to smash the door. I'm like, no, you wait a minute. Hold up. What are you doing? <laughs> As you can see, the victim was discovered was discovered, uh, prostrate. Prostrate? Yeah, that's the word, I guess. On the floor! Um, th thus wise. And next to the aforementioned body, we discovered the veil gutter child. Veil gu- vile. 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 Veil. Vile. Vile. That's the word. Are you talking about Ginny? She's my friend, you know, Inspector. Miss Lestrade. That hapless girl was curled up on the floor, dead to the world. She's still alive, you know. Yes, when I saw her, she appeared to be unconscious. And I'm afraid to say she had a gun that was used in her hand. No. Yes. Presumably, it's the gun that's still there on the floor. In her pocket, we found the key to the door as well. What? 
the key to the storeroom. And you say the storeroom had been locked from the inside, Inspector. Correct. All of which leaves her ladyship's friend in something of a sticky situation, I'm afraid. I'm saying we got a bit of a situation. Just a little bit. Obviously, my personal opinion is that of uh, is that it's all some sort of misunderstanding. Of course it is, Inspector. Of course it is. All right. What about Shlomes? How's he doing? Drexy, do you know anything about Hurley? Is the operation finished? Is Hurley all right? Is he? Uh, well, um, the thing is, uh... Don't mention your words, Inspector. Please. You don't mean to say that Mr. Slums is... is... No, 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 no. The operation is done and dusted. It's just that, well... Out with it. <laughs> oh, she's gonna hurt him. Yes, ma'am. They use something called the general anesthetic. It's the last thing, uh, it's the latest thing. Renders the whole body insensitive. The whole body anesthetic, fuck, anesthetized. That's a word, that's a big word. <laughs> Is that even possible? It means the operation can be completed while the patient is fast asleep. Goodness, in the Empire of Japan, we can just manage to provide laughing gas for tooth extractions. Even nowadays, fucking dentists don't want to do that. They don't want to put you under unless they have to, which sucks. Because dentists are like, all right, make sure you want to have a whole conversation with me while I'm like fucking arm deep in your mouth with like tools and shit. And you're like, you're like fucking doctor, please. Dentist, I don't even feel like calling dentists doctors. I honestly don't. I'm not saying they don't deserve it, but it just doesn't feel right. They don't seem like they're trying to heal me. They seem like they're trying to hurt me. Anyways, I'm like, doctor, please. I'm choking on my own spit here. I don't want to fucking talk to you. <laughs> the trouble is, the latest thing isn't always the greatest thing, if you follow what I mean. They couldn't get the medication to work at first, so it took hours for him to nod off. Oh, sorry, here. And now that the op is finished, they can't get him to wake up, apparently. You guys put him in a fucking coma? They were like, hmm, it seems the morphine isn't working. He's still talking about the pain. Give him more. Maybe a little bit more. Just keep jabbing it in there. Are you awake yet? <laughs> You're asleep now. Good. Guess we can operate on your fucking lifeless corpse. Oh my. No one knows if the anesthetic's still in a system or if the bloke's just plain exhausted. <laughs> Bad method. But anyways, all they can do is stand back and watch until he comes around again. Hurley. The moment he opens his eyes, your ladyship, I swear I shall get word to you. I remember when I was in the hospital and they were like, alright, we're gonna give you a little bit of morphine. And then, I swear, like, my family was around me. They are like, oh man, we get to see you high for the first time because you don't smoke or nothing. And I was like, and I was like, sure, I guess. And then I'm sitting there, they're like, you're feeling it, right? And I'm like, no, I just kind of feel hot, really. Like a little sweaty, that's it, really. And they're like, nah, you're feeling it, you're high. And I'm like, I'm really not, though. <laughs> Let that continue for like four hours of me just going, guys, I'm not high, can you stop? <laughs> what a surprise. Even if it matters, even in matters of life and death, Mr. Slums has to do his, has to do things his way. All right. All right, well, let's do some investigation. First, let's look at the blood. The police have marked the position of the body with the chalk line. <laughs> the bat method works every time. <laughs> Need to knock him out. Take it right to the dome piece. Poor Mr. Wendy Banks. He was a nice old man. Very suicidal, though. Well, he was shot just once through the heart. So what you're telling me is that he was shot straight through the heart. That that's a that's a that's a terrible reference. <laughs> it wasn't even a good one. Most likely the fellow died instantly. He would have not felt the thing. Aha! I may well be able to help with that. What? 
There's nothing like the sight of blood to get the blood pumping, is there, Runo? You're a weird one. You're a weird child. I have a feeling I'm not as bloody-minded as you, Iris. I'm afraid the sight of blood makes my blood run cold. There you have it, you see. When it comes to blood, we're all different types. Yes, what a scientific observation. So, you need this. A gun. Oh no, what's that scary looking thing? Hmm, Hurley and I haven't actually come up with a name for it yet. But as soon as you see it in action, you'll understand what it does. Watch, and be amazed as I shoot you. It reveals blood. Oh. So it's that fucking weird solution that they keep using in, uh... In, what, CSI? Where they're like, make sure you just take the spray and spray it all over the room. Oh, what's this blue shit over here? It's blood. There. Does it make sense now? Yes. I think I'm starting to understand. Good. It works on the principle that different people have different types of blood, you see? Yes, how wonderful. The chemical of fire is combined with the blood it uh, combines with the blood and makes it change color. So you can identify whose blood is it that you're looking at in the flash. Oh, what a fabulous adventure, Iris. But what if they have the same blood type? Isn't it? Hmm. Isn't it? I bet I bet Jenny would say it's bleeding great. So, whose blood are we looking at? Obviously, Mr. Wendy Banks. Must be Mr. Wendy Banks' blood. Yes, this is where he was shot, but there can't be any questions of that. This could turn out to be a very valuable clue. So we simply must make a note of it. The blood analysis has been entered into the court records. Can that be taken as evidence, though? I mean, don't they have to go through a whole entire procedure? I guess. I guess you can just say anything's evidence nowadays. Let's keep testing and adding the results of any other blood analysis to the profile. As long as I have the regent left, sure. Alright, well let's check the gun. This is a revolver. A real one! It goes bang bang. And quite possible the murder weapon used to take Mr. Wendy Banks' life. Typed it on Twitter. You don't have to respond quickly. It's a bit more than <laughs> it's a bit more than you hoped. What's the matter, Susie? You and Runo look like you're about to faint. Well, Iris, there's this thing. There's this thing known as uh, gun laws, and it seems in Japan they don't ha they have very strict gun laws. So when you show them a gun, they're very scared of it. <laughs> What's the matter, Susie? Well, it's just that I've rarely seen a gun in the flesh. And I have issues with guns in the past. By the way, we saw Mr. Wendy Banks with it yesterday, didn't we? Hmm. Phone silence. <laughs> what? Phone slides my sentence in half. <laughs> yeah, because that's fucking... That's what Twitch does. The Twitch app is weird on the phone. It really is. I shall have to take my own life. At least you didn't have to. Someone took it for you. Must have been the same gun. He was shot with his own gun. Well, I mean, at least... Can't say I'm surprised about that. <laughs> at last. I'm gonna look through the spy hole in the door to the storeroom here. That was the same gun I saw in Gina's hand. Mr. Winniebanks told us he never had a single bullet loaded in the revolver, didn't he? Wait, what? Oh, told us that he had, that he only had. My bad. Where the fuck did I get the extra words from? My brain. It's stupid. Well, it's empty now. The one and only bullet he had in his gun has been fired. So we can fair, we can be fairly certain that the only single shot was fired from the revolver. That was a weird sentence that I said. Out of all the, or, uh, out of all the articles in the storeroom, this is the only thing that shows any sign of being ransacked. Let me guess your manuscripts were in there, right? What is it, Iris? That's... That's the box file that my manuscript was being kept in. Oh. 
Iris unpublished story, The Hound of the Baskervilles. Surely that's not what all this... What did you do? What did you do, Iris? Sorry, Iris, but if you ask me, he sold it. Without telling you. You must check inside the box at once. Yes. Huh? It was there. Iris' story was there. Really? It was? Well, that's good news, isn't it, Iris? Um, yeah. I mean, of course I believe Hurley when he said he'd he deposited it here, but still, it's a relief to actually see it. Really? Because that's not a very well hidden frown. Iris's manuscripts have been entered in the courtrooms. Well, it is court evidence, so I guess I'll have to take a quick old look at it. Uh, damn it. Can't find anything out of place. The Hound of the Baskervilles. How did susano san know exact, know exact, uh, know the exact title of this unpublished story? I suppose I'll just have to wait until she's ready to explain it to me. I'm so sorry. You better be sorry. You better be. What's over here? Look at all these articles. They've been deposited. The room is stuffed full of them. I can't believe how many there are. A bicycle, a gramophone, musical instruments, even some enormous paintings. Pieces of different people's lives. Quietly, gathered du quietly gathering dust in here together. There's something very peaceful about the atmosphere in here. Because it's not a fucking liminal, uh, liminal space, right? <laughs> like what uh, the new, um... Whoever fuck the new creepypasta is, the uh, the back rooms or whatever, it's nothing but liminal spaces. There's something very peaceful about atmosphere here. Or at least there would be, if not for the chalk outline on the floor and the policemen shuffling around the room. Not much I can do about that, sunshine. Alright. Got some music disc here. Nothing else to really check on? You, s you sure? That can't be it, can it? Huh. I, I guess that's all the evidence we'll get out of this room for now. Oh. Iris? Don't worry, I'm alright. But we must find the true culprit. Yes, absolutely. Okay, that was, uh, that was a weird interaction. That was really unnecessary, to be honest. Uh, I guess there's really nothing else to check in here. Anything else to talk about? Uh, wait, Gregson? No? Hmm. Okay, well, let's head back to the, uh, main shop. I would actually like to take a look at this music box, please. That's a music box. Do you have them where you come from, Runo? Yes, but I've never seen one this large. Oh, well, this will be a treat. Shall we have a listen? What do you think? Isn't it pretty? It's a beautiful sound, yes, but... It's a little hard to enjoy with all the policemen in the room giving you fierce looks. Never mind that. If any of them say anything, I'll tell Gregsy to have a word. Iris Wilson, Superintendent of Scotland Yard. Hmm. Okay, so where is the, uh... What button? What button is it to, uh... There we go. Uh... Where is the, um... Camera... That he would have set up? Oh, what the fuck? Why is this covered in blood? Oh, look here. Ah, oh, yes, a bullet hole. And I can see the bullet is still lodged in the wall. Presumably, Mr. Winniebanks wasn't practicing. Practicing? That's a 
Yeah, okay. Wasn't practicing with his revolver in the spare time. Ah, well. Mr. Sloan's like to practice in his drawing room whenever he can. He's very patriotic like that. Sorry? It's all there in the adventures of Herlock Sloan's, you know? Isn't that right, Iris? Uh, did I write something like that? Partly in a jest, perhaps. In a jest? Well, he doesn't do it often. It's quite dangerous pastime. He doesn't do it often. He shouldn't even do it once. Forget that for now, Runo. Like to examine the bullet. Yeah, okay. What's that around the bullet hole? I think it's blood. Is it blood? Hmm, a suspicious red stain on the calendar. Aha, this is where I come in. Oh yeah, right. If the blood changes to be the same color uh, oh, as the sample from the star room, we'll know that it's Mr. Windybank's blood. Exactly. Here we go then. It's green. Hmm. It's a completely different color than Mr. Windybank's blood. It just goes to show, things don't always go according to plan, do they? Nevertheless, we must add the sample and the results to the other blood analysis. Okay. So someone else got shot or, like, nicked by a bullet here? This is the strange contraption that lets you see pictures of things as they are right in front of your eyes. It makes you think, when Shalom's gleefully showed it to us yesterday, we were blissfully unaware that any of this was about to happen. True. Hmm. Anything else in here that I can take a quick old look at? I'm fairly sure this contraption was here yesterday as well. Here we are, though I'm not confident I can get it closed again. Oh, yes. That's a folding stereoscope. Ste stereo can you say the word? Stereoscope. Really? This is a stereoscope. Mr. Sloan showed us a picture yesterday that we can- oh, fuck. That we were supposed to be able to see in three dimensions. But, but uh, for that, he used the great big contraption over there. Ah, oh, well, that's for public houses and places like that. It contains a carousel with those sort of pictures inside. But this little thing is much simpler design for use at home. There are special shops selling prints you can use them. Uh, you can use in them. I have a little collection myself. I wonder if I can make money out of these in Japan. I would, I would, <laughs> I would be keeping my to wait, what? It would be keeping my toilet sparkling clean anyway. Wait, what? I'm sorry? I wonder if I could make money out of these in Japan. It would be keeping my to toilet sparkling clean anyways. What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> I don't- what? <laughs> I, don't, I don't get that. Okay. Uh, there's the article ledger here in Mr. Winnie Bank's notes, and uh... What's this? Looks as though he's left a little photographic print behind. Oh, look on the back. There's something written. Is there? Oh, show us, Susie. Show us. 15th of February, 10.30 p.m. Article deposited, one gentleman's overcoat. Loan amount paid, a pound. Redemption deadline, 15th of April, 10.30 p.m. A gentleman's overcoat pawned for a pound. Clearly it was a very fine coat, in fact, I think. Yes. Must be the ticket for the overcoat that Jenny redeemed yesterday. And, it's still, and is still wearing, which belongs to Mr. McGilded. I would never have expected the redemption ticket to be handwritten on the back of a photographic... On a photographic, wow. Well, on a photo, though. It seems Mr. Winnie Banks just used whatever piece of paper he had in mind. Had in mind, had in his hand, whatever, doesn't matter. But this photograph of a cat... It looks very familiar, doesn't it? I'm sure I've seen the exact same picture somewhere else recently. Oh, yes, you're right. Very recently. It's the same as the one Ginny gave us earlier. Of course. 
I was forgetting that she gave us that print. Well, uh, then what are you waiting for, Mr. Nalahoto? Get it out! Alright, alright. Look the cog's turn. Give me a moment, girl. Yes, they're exactly the same. Except one is at a different angle. One, the cat's looking straight ahead, and the other one, the cat, looking to the side. Yes, they're exactly the same. Somewhat. I've got it. These two photographs hide an amazing secret. A secret? What does she mean? You must tell us, Iris, at once. At once. Do you really, really, really want to know? I mean, considering that we're defending your friend, yes. Yes, we need you to tell us all you know about these pair of photographs. I gotta fucking ask you, really. Tell me about the photographs, please. So, Iris, about these two photographic prints. The one we found here on Mr. Winnie Bank's counter and the one Gina gave us before. What is this amazing secret you mentioned that hidden between these two identical prints? Actually, that's not quite right. Sorry? If you look carefully, the two prints are actually, aren't actually the same. What are they? They're not? Have another look at them now. I mean, I kind of deduced that already. Hmm. Can you see that they're just slightly different from each other? I think so. It's very subtle, though. But what's the reason for the subtle difference between the two prints? Ah, well, it's because they're a set, you see? No, I don't, actually. These pair of photographs. It's meant to be used in a stereoscope. Everyone in London is raving about them at the moment. Oh, a stereoscope. Why do I feel as though I've heard that word before recently? Almost like two seconds ago. Oh, yeah. That's what Mr. Slum showed us yesterday. And, you know, the item we were talking about like two seconds ago? You see, there it is over there. Ah, oh, yes, of course. That magical machine that makes pictures look almost real enough to touch. Well, actually... It's quite possible to see the same depth in picture even without one of them... Even without one of those contraptions. What? Really? My friend's trying to make plans to hang out for tomorrow and we went through nearly 20 plan changes. Dude, fucking... I hate... I hate it when someone makes a plan when someone's the when someone's the person that's like, hey man, I want to make plans and you go, okay, sure, I'm down. And then they make the whole entire plan or whatever, right? They're like, all right, how about we head here and do this or whatever? And it's like, sure. And then the next day rolls around and they're like, it's about time like to meet or whatever. And you're just like texting them. You're like, dude, uh, it's been like 20 minutes. What's going on? And then fucking like. Out of nowhere, they'll be like, sorry, I gotta cancel. It's like, what? Why didn't you tell me that earlier? <laughs> I gotta cancel way after the meeting time. Like, what? What the fuck? Why? Even, like, earlier in the day, you'll be like, yo, are we still on for that, whatever? For whatever the fuck we're doing? It's like, yeah, we're still on. Like, you lying ass. Do you know how a pair of flat photographic prints can appear to have any depth in them in the first place? Well, you focus on the object in front? No, I have no idea. Oh, wonderful. Then I'll be able to tell you. She's over the moon. Bless her. Do we let her explain, though? We really need to carry on the investigation scene. I, for one, simply have to know. Of course you do, Mikoroba. Of course you do. All right. So how do they work? Have you ever considered, Runo? How your eyes see depth in the world around us? Well, I just opened them and it works. Ryunosuke, a simple man who likes simple things. Uh, I had half people cancel last minute on me once too. 
went from inviting 15 or more people to going with the one person I barely knew out of all the people. Jesus. Dude, you ever had that one thing where like a whole entire plan is set and then everyone gets there and it's the ones all like, by the way, I brought an extra person with me and it's like, it's like, that's not the problem. The problem is that you didn't run it past anybody. <laughs> Here's this extra person that none of us barely knew. Ugh, oh, Jesus. Like, I remember, uh, I was celebrating 4th of July one time with a group of people. And, like, one of them brought a friend over. And they're like, oh, they're a friend from, from, uh, wherever the fuck, I don't know, whatever. A friend of a friend of a friend of a friend or wherever the fuck, I don't, I don't know. But the dude was hanging out with us and it was, it was getting, like, really late or whatever. And we were all like, alright, well, let's go grab something to eat. You know, and then, you know, we're all adults. We all have wallets on us, right? We all are going to pay for our own meals. I fucking, like, the moment we sat at the table, I said, all right, listen, I'm not trying to be that guy, but I'm going to be that guy, right? We're all content on paying for our own meals, right? Everybody has money. Like, before we even sat down, I said, I said, everybody has money for their own meals. We're all content on paying for our own meals, right? And everyone's like, yeah, 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 sure, sure, sure. And of course... The dude that nobody knew, once the meal was over, first of all, dude was like a fucking man-child, I swear. He was just like, like, we're all ordering dinner and shit, and he's all like, man, I just want some french fries and ice cream, and I'm like, what? <laughs> okay. So, eating some french fries and ice cream, that's your dinner, I guess. I mean, you're a grown-ass dude, do what you want. And like, fucking, you know, all said and done, and we're ready to pay the bill, and he's all like, oh man, can someone cover me? I don't have, I don't have my wallet on me, it's like... How do you... What? Dude. You serious? And then as they were sitting there saying that, like, I got up, fucking went to the counter, paid for my meal, and then just left. I was like, I'll see you guys outside. I'm not dealing with this bullshit. Y'all can figure that out. <laughs> like... Like, the moment he said it, I was like, excuse me, I'm just gonna get up and walk away, because I, I pointed it out to everyone, I said, alright though, for real, let's be honest, right? And you know, the whole problem isn't like paying for someone's meal, if someone really needed their meal to be paid for, you just, you know, you speak up beforehand, so you know what they're getting into, right? But, dude, come on. It's like, my guy, I'm sorry, you couldn't pay for your french fries and ice cream. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> also, earlier that night or whatever, a uh, dude found, I don't, like, this is how much of a man-child I swear this guy was. He found, like, an empty beer bottle, not an empty, like, half-empty beer bottle, so there was some fucking liquor in it or whatever, alcohol, whatever the fuck. And he's all like, oh man, I'm totally gonna drink this, and it's like, alright, then drink it, you're an adult, you're not driving or anything tonight. And he's all like, no, nah, I can't do it. You know, my parents would get mad at me. What do you mean your parents would get mad at you? You're fucking in your 20s. What are you talking about? What? Okay. Right? So then, like, he starts, like, motioning like he's gonna drink it or whatever. And then, you know, since we're fucking around, like, you know, someone bumps into him a little bit. And then he spills it on himself. And he's all like, man, I'm gonna get in so much trouble. I can't, I can't go home smelling like alcohol. Dude, can I, like, hop in your pool? And I can just say someone pushed me in the pool or whatever? And I'm like, dude, really? I'm like, I'm like, your whole excuse is that you want, you want to jump in the pool with all your clothes on because you're afraid of going home because you spilled a little alcohol on yourself. Just say someone spilled some alcohol on me. It's not that hard. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, what the fuck, man? You're an adult. Cut it the fuck out, dude. But whatever. Well, I just open them and it works. But the reason it works is because you have two eyes. Two eyes? Shocking. If you try closing just one eye, I think you'll see straight away. What you see in your left eye. And what you see in your right eye. Iris, you disappeared. What happened? And ever so slightly, uh are ever so slightly different. You get a different view with each eye. Yes, the position of objects seems to shift slightly. Exactly. And in your head, your brain uses the shift to estimate depth and it merges into two views into one. 
wait what uh, well i had like a stroke reading that <laughs> as it merges two views into one that's how we can sense death in everything we see my brain feels uh my brain is, uh what my brain really is amazing isn't it it does so much without telling me Hey, Tooth, how's it going? Hope you don't mind me shortening your name, by the way. See, I mean, my parents are, are uh, con conclusion jumpers, so you kind of get it. Seems like a man, <laughs> yeah, he seems like a man child, but it takes a lot to get the truth to my parents. Yeah, uh, but it's like, it's like dude was like in his, dude was like 23. Like, come on. You're 23 and you got it. You're scared if your parents know that you drink or something. Also, if you didn't want it to spill on you, why the fuck would you put it up to your lips? Like, I'm like, I'm gonna drink it. Like, dude, we're at a party. What the fuck, man? <laughs> oh, I think I see. So the pair of photographs consist of a left eye view and a right eye view. Oh. Well done, Susie. You're so quick. Hey, yeah, but how's everything going with you, Tooth? Hope everything's going well. Nice, having a lovely day. Oh, well done, Susie. You're so quick. So, if you can persuade your brain to merge the two pictures together in your head... You're good. Great to hear. I had to stretch. I had to stretch. You know what? I had to stretch because, like I said earlier, recently, I acquired some new VR tech right and by new vr tech it's not that new i i bit the bullet and i was like fuck it i'll get a facebook account i, I bought an oculus quest or whatever and i was like all right let me try some of the apps on here and there's one that's uh that's meant for doing like kind of a kind of like a a, a cardio slash body workout i guess i don't really want to call it a full body workout because it's not like you're doing sets or anything like that but um it's called Supernatural, and it's a paid-for subscription. You get, like, a free seven-day trial or whatever. And basically what what it is is, like, you know, there's there's Beat Saber or whatever. What the fuck? Virus and threat protection. Get the fuck out of my face, Windows. How about that? How about you leave me alone for, like, two seconds? Thank you. You've been fucking with me the whole entire week, and I'm tired of you. <laughs> I had enough of Windows. It's pissed me off for the past two weeks. But, um, yeah. So, yeah, the Quest 2. Um, so, the meta quest, I refuse to call it that, it's the Oculus, don't at me. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's called Supernatural or whatever, right? And it's, you know, a lot of people compare it to Beat Saber. First of all, I'm gonna say, by first-hand experience, it is not, like, I get that it's rhythm-based and it's all this other bullshit, it is nowhere near Beat Saber. It is made for you to, you know, move around and get some, get a nice sweat going, right? And run out of breath pretty fast because one of the things that you do there's like three different uh modes there's like a meditation mode i think which i haven't tried there's one where like you have these bats in your hand which are the ones that people compare to beat saber i guess and then there's one where you're boxing you're basically shadow boxing right and oh boy the only one i did was the shadow boxing stuff but oh shit oh my god that shit is like this is coming from someone who who fucking does exercise five times a week and I mostly do like body workouts and stuff like that and a little bit of weightlifting here and there but fucking uh oh my god that shit tired me out so fucking fast it wasn't even funny to be fair I don't focus on muscular endurance as much as I should but fucking uh like like I clicked on it, it's like here's a quick 12 minute or whatever you know three songs you go through it right and I was getting out of breath and I was tired. And then once I was done, I was looking at it and I looked to the corner and said, this was the low intensity one. And I went, that was low intensity? What the fuck is high intensity? So then I tried high intensity and I was like, oh no. I stopped after like, I stopped after like a minute and then I just fucking exited out of that mode because I was like, oh no, oh no. A, it's going too fast and I'm afraid I'm gonna punch something in my fucking room. And B, holy shit, no, <laughs> damn it. Yeah, but it's pretty great though. It was definitely worth the free seven day trial. I think I might keep keep at it. It's only like what fifteen a month or something like that. Which is like what the equivalent of like a fucking Final Fantasy fifteen sub. And I don't fifteen, my bad. Fourteen. Final Fantasy fourteen sub. He 
you think that's bad, you play ru uh, Russian? <laughs> play Rush Beat Saber. Yeah, but, like, Beat Saber's great. It is, but Beat Saber, um... Like, the... The, uh... I, for some reason, I want to say the calorie burn. I don't know why I want to say that. But the exercise you get out of like Beat Saber is kind of like an unintentional side of a unintentional side effect of it. And for the most part, Beat Saber, you're kind of just stagnant and um and like uh your base. It's all just wrist movements and stuff like that. It's all just like uh wrist movements and stuff like that. So you're not really having that much of a dynamic movement. Whereas in Supernatural or whatever. They have you, uh, first of all, they make you calibrate your height or whatever, and then, you know, they're like, calibrate your lunging stance, your lunging, yeah, your, like, squat, your squat stance and your lunging stance and stuff like that, and even if you don't want to lunge or anything like that, they're like, just stand still or whatever, because they're still going to get you moving about, and then, um, you know, the way they had the targets set up and stuff like that is that you really got to fucking, like, move into them, and also while you're doing it, like, at least for the shadow boxing stuff, while you're doing it, they're making sure that you're switching between, like, uh, Southpaw and, like, um, Orthodox Stance and stuff like that. And, like, they also have, like, um, you know how in Beat Saber they have, like, the walls that come near you? Well, in that, you just kind of step to the side. There's no, like, actual dynamic movement to that. You kind of step to the side. The only one that you get is, like, you when you have to crouch under it, where you have to, like, kind of squat. But, like, that doesn't show up as much in Beat Saber as, like, the other two walls. Because I guess people just don't put it in like custom maps or anything like that. You know, and Beat Saber does have like a 360 mode, but I mean, you're not really like you kind of just point the other way. There's no actual like real movement to it. I hope I'm explaining it correctly. But um, dude, I'm telling you, like, if you can, just try like a quick free trial on Supernatural if you can, right? It's you get a seven day free trial and then, you know, try it out. Within like, within like fucking five minutes, you're gonna see the difference, right? When you play VR, you don't get tired, but you get sweaty. Yeah, because a lot of heat escapes from like the head. Most of our body heat escapes from like the top of our heads and uh, the bottom of our feet. So when you have like, when you have basically an insulator, which is the headset blocking off your forehead and shit, you know, it builds up. Which is also really awesome about Supernatural, they gave me a code, they were like, by the way, thanks for joining us, here's a free code to get like a different, to get a different like, um, like face pad or whatever. So I have, I don't, I don't have to go out and buy a face pad, you know, I can just replace it with the one that they're gonna give me, which is really nice, because the one they're gonna give me doesn't collect sweat. <laughs> you just kinda wipe it. Also, Gorilla Tag. Gorilla Tag is, uh, I haven't played it yet, but just by seeing what it is, Gorilla Tag is definitely more of a workout than, um, than, uh, Beat Saber, for sure, because that whole entire thing is just, like, about, like, the momentum that you move around with your arms and stuff, but, um, but yeah, I mean, but that's pretty much arm work for, uh, you know, it's pretty much like doing intense arm circles, I guess, but, like, in Supernatural, like, again, they, like, it's not just, like, you're punching targets or whatever, right? You're doing uppercuts, hooks, fucking your straight jabs, your cross jabs, and then they also have you bobbing and weaving, so they'll be like, like, how I said, uh, they have the walls coming at you in Beat Saber, instead of that, they have, um, like these, like these slanted lines, they come at you, and you really gotta gyrate your hip around, and when you're doing that, like, like, you do that a couple of times, and then during some point in the song, they're gonna have you, you know, bob, but they're also gonna have you come back and weave, and have you do it again and again and again, while targets are also coming at you, and fucking, oh, you're, trust me, your, your back is gonna fucking be a little tired after that. <laughs> uh, the Quest 2 comes with the smooth head strap. You mean the, um... I love how we're sitting here looking at Iris and I'm just talking. Um, do you mean like the uh, the silicon one? The uh, the one that they give you is not the one that they give you is not the silicone cover. It's it's uh, I I forgot what what the what it's actually called, but it's something that 
like the silicone one is just kind of flabby to be honest it's just flabby and it's they're all over the place the other one has more um has more uh i don't know how to how to fucking i don't know what material it's called i really don't like you know how like think about like a leather seat for a moment right it's kind of like that but it's not leather it's that so like it unlike the um unlike the foam no not the foam unlike the foam where like it just kind of absorbs sweat this one it has like it has like a little bit of foam on the inside but like the outside is something that that's like sweat resistant so instead of having to put it in like a sink and wash it like to clean it out you just kind of take some antibacterial spray or some shit or wipes or something and you can just easily wipe the sweat off of it right you don't have to completely douse it and get it all soapy and shit so that's nice i can't wait for that to come to the mail <laughs> back to back to fucking ace attorney <laughs> also i haven't tried out vr chat so i'll do that one day and also, I have been trying to, um, see how I can possibly record some VR shit through it, right? Yesterday, for, for the first time ever, I played Phasmophobia, and I fucking did it with the headset while my friend was, uh, doing it on his PC or whatever. And oh boy, since it was the two of us, and I'm like, listen, the ghost isn't gonna show up unless one of us is alone. And then he's all like, well, I'm not going. I'm like, what do you mean you're not going? You're not the one in a fucking headset. <laughs> he bought the Crest too after, after March, then it comes with silicone. Yeah. But yeah, oh, also, like, I, I also got my friend to buy a Quest too when he didn't want to. But I talked to him, I was like, listen, listen. I know you're like, I know you're one of those PC master racers, I get it. And you want the Vive or whatever, but I'm telling you, just buy the $300 piece of fucking headwear, because you can just hook that up to your PC and play Steam games. You're not going to take your Vive outside of your home, so you might as well just get the Quest and get the base version of the Quest, because the 64 gig model doesn't exist no more. And, um... The base version is the 128 gig, I think. And I mean, let's face it. How many times are you really going to take your your VR headset outside of your home? So, yeah, just buy that one and then just hook up Steam VR and do it. Vive is bad. I haven't... I mean, the Vive was the first one I tried out when it first came out. I didn't buy it. Someone else had it. So I tried it and it was good at the time. So I'm not sure how how the newer how the newer versions of the Vive compares, but um, the main reason the main reason I even went and got a VR was because I pulled out my old PS4 because that's where I keep all the VR games because I'm not getting a fucking con uh, I'm not getting a goddamn wire to hook up to the PS5. I'm not doing that. That's too much. That's so annoying. So I just pulled out the PS4. That's basically my PlayStation VR station. And then, you know, I had some games sitting on there, and I was like, it's been a while since I played VR, let me do that. And as I was playing it, I was like, maybe I should get an Oculus. <laughs> and then I got an Oculus. So, there's that. Yes, Bruno. <laughs> and the stereoscope's function is to act as your brain and allow you to do just that. Best headset according to hardcore PC players is Vive Index. It's a thousand dollars. I bet it is, right? Because it's because here's the thing about I'm someone who has a PC and I love my PC. I mean, even though I yelled at it for the past two weeks and I beat its ass up, I still went out and got another SSD and threw that shit in there. But um, and I'm probably gonna upgrade my graphics card in like a couple of months or something like that. But you know, I love my PC. I love how versatile it is, even though for the most part, I buy most of my games on console. Um, but, like, I... When it comes to the whole PC Master Race thing, most people are like, like, uh... Oh, Valve Index, my bad. Not, not Vive, I'm sorry. But it's made by Valve, right? Valve and Steam are basically the same damn thing. But, um... <laughs> to put SSD, throw it in a PC... <laughs> Oh, trust me, I had to... I found out that one of my SATA cables didn't work, and I was like, what the fuck? Okay, cool. Um, and for some reason, my M2 that's in there is not getting registered for some reason, so I gotta check that out. But anyways, 
fucking um like there's this whole thing of like well does it have does it have negative negative a thousand per second latency or whatever right whereas fucking master pc racers are just a little too extreme right they're the type of person where if you start up your pc and you go to chrome they're gonna fucking have a heart attack because they're like chrome takes up too much memory you should use firefox or something i literally had someone yell at me to use firefox and i was like dude it's fine chrome is fine i'm not like at least i'm not using fucking microsoft edge right but like hey you don't want to hear my pc specs <laughs> they are better than yours oh i i fucking believe that in a heartbeat because when it came to my pc the only thing i was worried about was um the cpu honestly so mine is just like a hodgepodge of bullshit really um i'm like working on like a fucking what eight-year-old graphics card or some shit but um like like the whole thing about the valve index is that it's just like it it gives you the it has the least amount of uh least amount of fucking input latency and all this other bullshit and like you hook up to does it even still use towers i don't even think it uses towers anymore and it's like it has 50 fucking cameras on it so it tracks every single goddamn angle that you're moving around and it's like all right dog all i need is something that works and works good does it work does it work good can i play it reliably cool right like even um before i got the link cable I don't even have the official Oculus Link Cable. I have a third-party Link Cable, which is good enough because I'm not, like, playing competitive shooters on a fucking VR headset. That's just too much work. But, um, like, even when I didn't have that cable and I hooked it up via AirLink, like, my Wi-Fi was really... My Wi-Fi is pretty good, so, like, you know, even though I use Ethernet cables and stuff like that, my Wi-Fi is pretty goddamn good. I use Gigabit, so fucking, um... You know, and I'm working off of, like, not even, like, an epic gamer router or anything like that, right? I'm working off a router that I bought from the company that fucking, that I'm getting my internet from. But, um, like, even with the Air Link, I had, like, no latency whatsoever. Like, I was just playing the games just fine. Like, nothing, nothing hindered me in any sort of way or anything like that. But, anyways, sitting here talking about PCs and shit. Me playing Phasma with the classmate, too. Exactly. I defaulted into my shaggy voice just walking around. I was like, I was like, like Scoob, I wonder what the hell the ghost is, man. It might be like a demon or something. CPU Intel i7 6700, uh, 3.4 gigahertz. <laughs> Jesus. All right, back to the game. <laughs> Sitting here, Iris is like, I'm trying to tell you about how the eyeball works, and you're not listening to me. Yes, but as long as you have two images, two eyes, and one brain, you can actually do it yourself without needing a stereoscope at all. Let's see, you can really. All right, how about the view stereoscope prints? Let's try it. Let's see if you can view this part of the prints without the help of the stereoscope. Oh yes, I'm dying to have a go. Suzata Sun really loves this kind of thing. GPU Intel HD Graphics 530. Hmm. I need to upgrade to a. Like, I'm not gonna go crazy and upgrade to like a fucking. A fucking 380 Ti or whatever the fuck. Uh, 3080, my bad. 3080 Ti or whatever the fuck. Like, I'm not gonna go that crazy, but. Just upgrade to something that can do like maybe base ray tracing or something like that. You need to be able to cross your eyes. That's the main thing. Can you do? Can you both do that? Cross my eyes? I think I can. Cross my T's and dot my eyes? Watch me and see if you can copy. Ugh. Make your eyes do that. Guys, stop doing it. This is what the internet wants. It wants that Ahego weird shit. Are you ready, Mr. Nanohoto? <laughs> Stop! <laughs> there, how's that? Wonderful. Now it's your turn, Reno. The trick is to concentrate on looking at the bridge of your nose with both eyes at the same time. Not exactly an easy task when you two are st are starting. When you two, <laughs> fuck. When you two are staring, when people are staring at you cross-eyed. But okay. All right, that's enough practice. 
Now let's try and look at the prints. If you can tell my- wait, what? If you can tell my specs are ass, I'm just joking, you got a better PC than me. Is the- hmm. Said you want to learn about eyes. <laughs> you said you wanted to learn about eyes. <laughs> yeah, just do this weird Ahago shit. Is that how you pronounce it? I don't- I don't even know. Speaking about that, what the fuck ever happened to Bella Delphine? Remember when that was like a hot topic for like a fucking- For like a year? And then she just died into obscurity. She was the girl that did that gamer girl bathwater shit, right? Start by staring at the one print slowly crossing your eyes. Ugh. <laughs> you should see two overlapping images like this. Vert lies passes through the cornea, the clear oh god damn it. The clear front layer of the eye. The cornea is shaved in the dome and bends light to help the eye focus. Some of the light enters your eye through an opening called the pupil. Pupil. The iris, the color part of the eye, controls how much light the pupil lets in. Next, light passes through the lens, a clear Jesus. A clear inner part of the eye. The lens works together with the cornea to focus light correctly on the retina. When light hits the retina, Am I supposed to scroll it? It got like cut off in half. That's where the sentence ends. Try it now, Runo. I'm just gonna have to give it a try, I suppose. Trust me, I had my I had my fair share of eyeball talk for the past year dealing with my dog and his fucking and his goddamn cataracts, which is now completely gone. The little bastard took all my money. Did the print spill? Uh, did the print split into two images for you? Now the next step. Is to pull the pair of prints aside by side like this, and then try crossing your eyes again. The prints should slowly merge together. Until... They form a new single image in the center. Oh, yes! Yes, queen! Wanna learn about how the mouth works? I'm good, dog. I already know what that mouth do. <laughs> Mr. Narahoto, it works. I see you in the middle now. I'm sure your mom knows. <laughs> My, I'm sad now. It looks so real. Now I can look at it all day. Don't. You'll get stuck like that. I wouldn't advise that. Your eyes might start to hurt. Your turn, Reno. Pretend you're looking through the two pictures and slowly cross your eyes. Keep adjusting the position of your eyes until the two images overlap exactly in the middle. Like this? Hmm. I can't do it. There, you managed it. So now you know how stereoscopic, how stereoscopic image works. Well, I don't know who discovered it, but it really is quite extraordinary. So, what do you think of these stereoscopic prints then, Reno? They're certainly amazing, but it isn't easy to get the knack of viewing them properly. <laughs> I thought this was Ace Attorney, not fucking eye class. Oh, listen, you gotta you gotta go the most arbitrary route to to get to the answer in Ace Attorney. As we can all see from fucking uh Justice for All. I'm never gonna get over that shit. Me just sitting there going going like, what's the answer to this? And they're like, oh, you're supposed to know by looking at the green gym and the fucking key. And I'm like, if that's an important clue, then tell me it's an important clue. You didn't tell me it's an important clue. <laughs> Wait until physics get involved? Is that gonna happen in the 3DS games? Oh no. No, some people find it easier than others. But that's why contraptions like this exist, for people who find it tricky. Oh, I recognize that. We saw one over there yesterday, didn't we? I feel like you guys have repeated this over and over and over again. If I remember correctly, you press this little knob here. <laughs> hey yo, this is interesting. Better TV. <laughs> yeah, I have all yeah, I have the uh, B BT TV stuff up. That was before- that was before fucking Twitch was like, Oh, guys, guess what? We're doing animated emotes now. And it's like, after how many years? 
Fucking come on, Twitch. They set a pair of photographs in the stands at the back. Wait, what? They set a pair of photographs in the stand at the back end. Throw that shit back. It's still amazing, even though I know roughly how it works now. Made by me? No, that one wasn't made by me. The only one, not technically, none of them are made by me, right? The only one that's quote unquote made by me is the Chad Wellington emote. But that one's actually animated by Volta Base. So go check him out on Twitter. He's way more popular than me. <laughs> I gotta email him, man. I gotta email him one day. Well, Lennon seems to agree with you. Stereoscopes are very popular at the moment. And put all the sus emotes. Man, I'm I'm not gonna first of all. How do I say it without sounding like one of those elite like an elitist asshole? Like I get why Among Us is, you know, fucking popular and shit. I get it. But I never got the appeal of it because I'm like, unless you have a group of eight fucking people, like, no one's gonna kind of, no one's really gonna have fun because you gotta use text chat and all that shit. And I'm pretty sure there's only like a, there's like a shit ton of like 12 year olds playing that game. So it's gonna get annoying real quick. And then they announced the VR version, right? And I'm like, okay, this might be interesting. But then I realized, wait a minute. There are a bunch of spoiled ass brats who parents buy them VRs for Christmas because it's pretty cheap uh, compared to the rest of the market. So now instead of like heading to the rec room and being surrounded by a bunch of 10 year olds, you're going to play Among Us in VR. And now you're going to hear them screaming at you every five fucking seconds. <laughs> VR chat as a, as a recreation of Among Us. You know, there's this game that's kind of like Among Us. It's been around for years. It's called Trouble in Terrorist Town. <laughs> you should play it. Uh, I always felt that Trouble in Terrorist Town did a better job at it, right? But now that the VR Among Us or whatever is happening, I guess, I guess I'll give it a try when it comes out. But I'm just so scared that like so many, you know, it's going to be like one of those YouTuber bait games. Like YouTuber's Life or whatever the fuck. Um, or goat simulator so I feel like it's gonna be one of those things where like you hop in there and you might expect like all right gonna play some Among Us and probably talk to some like-minded adults and let's figure this shit out but you're probably gonna be surrounded by kids that are just like oh man sussy baka deaths and you're like what the fuck <laughs> there are some adults should give it a try <laughs> should give it a try to get some bitches oh trust me dude Trust me. Listen, let's be real. Hey, Breezy, you know how I do out there, right? I don't need help getting no bitches. By the way, speaking about getting bitches, fucking, um, right after that stream about that, uh, about the, uh, simulacrum shit, fucking, it's never like minded adults. Yeah, I know, it never is. There's always someone in there spouting some crazy shit. But, um, after that, like, you know, that stream with simulacrum, whatever. I opened up my nice little dating app, found someone to talk to, exchanged some messages, got the number. I don't need no help. I don't need no help and no fucking Among Us to, I don't need Among Us to get me some of that, you know what I mean? Like I said, reinvent yourself. <laughs> you can find one of these folding contraptions in a lot household in the capital's currency. Currency, did I read that right? Currently. But if these little machines are affordable, Go outside and get bitches, you need Tinder. First of all, Tinder is not the first place to get bitches if you really want to be like that. Tinder is the last place you should go. Tinder's where you get your fucking kidney stolen. <laughs> the other apps are way more, uh, way more, way more liable than Tinder. Tinder's just full of bullshit. Surely there's, uh, surely there's no need to go around staring cross-eyed at pictures like you hate them. By the way, it's all a joke. Oh, no, definitely. If there's any, like, I know people who, like, s take that shit seriously, and it's like, bro, you really sound like a loser. I'm not gonna lie. But it's much more satisfying to be able to see the effects with your own eyes. Well, I think so, in any case. Sorry, I had, a, like, a moment for a moment. I had a moment for a moment. That's a that's a word. That's a sentence that I just used. 
All right, we currently learned a lot about them, but I wonder if it's knowledge that I'll that I'll ever actually need. The second white cat photograph has been added to the court record. Back in my day, the ladies would come to us. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. What else is in this fucking place that we need to check? The shovels and shit? Read it in the old time voice. Damn. I'm gonna have to like take a drink of water before I do some shit like that. And then I'm gonna have to find the voice. Maybe get a little bit like uh Master Roshi in there. <laughs> Let me see, can I find the voice? Can I do it? Dig deep down. Nah, I muted my mic for a quick second. I tried to see if I can find the voice. I can't find the voice. I can't do it. Not right now. Hmm. Maybe like a maybe like a dying old man. Back in my day, the ladies used to come to us. That booty was hella thick. I'm talking about thick with the two C's. The ledger that's open on the counter, there really is enormous, isn't it? It must be an awful lot of work to keep track of all these hundreds of items in pawn. It's too much to think about. Better to sell it all and have a clear head if you ask me. But clearly, Mr. Wendy Banks was very careful when it came to the articles in his care. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, is there anything else in here that we have to look at? While we're fucking about? Check out that ass from the police officer. The police are, sc are scouting every inch of this place, by the look of it. Instructions from his yard are to examine every article in the shop, and every ledger and book accounts. Every article? But that's ridiculous in our work, surely. We've been hard at it ever since the shop was declared a crime scene in the early hours. We're shifting through it all. <clears throat> My bad. Uh, we're shifting through- uh, I can't even say the word. Yeah, shifting. Yeah, we're shifting through it all, in shifts at least, but still. We'll be working through the night, that's for sure. Even though when we barely even scratch the surface. Crime and a problem, brokers. Must be must be every policeman's worst nightmare. It's every copper's worst nightmare, you know? A crime and a palm brokers. Okay, cool. Uh I guess that's everything in here. I mean. Hmm. Yeah, I, I guess that's everything in here. Oh, wait. What's this? Three golden balls. Okay. <laughs> that's right. The sign the sign shows the shop is a pawn brokery. A bit like your armband shows that you're a defense lawyer. And that's the significance of these three golden balls. I mean, it might have other meanings. Does it have some special meaning? I expect Hurley would like to answer that question when he's back from the hospital. You mean you don't know? Great. Hmm. Nothing? I'm surprised that, like... Where the fuck is the camera? Doesn't he have, like, a camera in the shop somewhere? Like, taking pictures at intervals? Like, where is it? Because it's not this thing here. Hmm. Alright, I, I guess that's everything in here. Then. How do I, uh... There we go. Nothing else to talk to Iris about? And let's check the uh, court record real quick. Let's see. It's an adorable little cat. Okay. I always thought cats like to curl up inside under the heat in the heated kotatsu blanket in the snow. Maybe British cats are different. Actually, now that we have both pictures, I can have another go at the viewing them. So, I need to cross my eyes and try to get two cats to merge in the middle of one. Such a hard thing to do. 
Whoever thought of this in the first place must have spent a long time staring. Hmm. Alright. Blood samples, manuscripts, cat picture number two. Anything on the back of this? Are we not going to check the blood? Mr. Nadahoto, I don't know if you noticed, but there's something rather troubling here. I've noticed. The red smear, you mean? Yes, it looks like blood, doesn't it? I wonder if Susanna-san had picked up on that. Well, in that case, yes, we need Iris. We should show this to her before we forget. Okay, there we go. Hey, Iris, check this out. Wait, my bad. I gotta present it. There we go. Oh, that looks like blood. It is blood. What's that smell? It's blood. I would say it's from a gloved finger. Almost certainly a glove made of leather. Oh, well, since there's no fingerprints. Well, don't worry, Bruno. You leave the rest to me. Pow pow. Purple. Look at that. Purplish pink. Yes, that's a color we haven't seen before, is it? Man, everybody was bleeding everywhere in here. Jesus. We simply must add it to the portfolio. Uh, bo eh, portfolio. Can't say the word. The blood samples. Although, it would be nice to find out whose blood these different colors correspond to at some point. Well, this particular stain of blood. Oh, you have any idea, have you? Do you know whose blood this is? I do! I do! Yes, I have an idea whose blood it is. Not from the color it turned, but with a little deduction. That's right! I think it's clear. Iris, you know as well. You first, Runo. Who do you think it belongs to? All right. I believe that the blood belongs to... Rice fired Mason, Jesus. Pop Wendy Banks. I think it's Gina's. Oh my, you think it's Gina's blood? Yeah, it was Gina who brought the ticket here to Wendy Banks after all. Sometimes the simplest answer is the right one. Hmm, but Gina doesn't own any gloves. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> my, I mean, my mind was like Gina wasn't even bleeding, so. Oh, yeah, you're right. And Ginny wasn't injured either, was she? Yeah, I know. I just... I just thought, okay? It probably belongs to Mr. Mason. Oh. Give me another shot, Iris. We're trying to work out the, where the blood came from. So we can rule out anyone who hadn't been bleeding straight away. Yeah, I know, okay? <laughs> it was just a joke! I got it. Alright, I was just hoping, you know? I was hoping a little bit. Hoping that it would be easy this time around. It's fucking Mr. Mason, okay? Thrice fired Mason. You don't sound very sure of yourself, the way you child trailed off there. Well, it was two months ago. You know, and I haven't streamed this <laughs> since two weeks ago. And of course, I've never met the victim, so I'm struggling to remember his name. He was definitely thrice fired, though. The victim of the Omnibus case? Yes, his name was indeed Mr. Thrice-Fired Mason. But that would mean that this blood stain was left on the ticket two months ago. Yes, I think it was. Gina bought the ticket here in Wendy Bank yesterday. I'm suggesting that the blood stain was already on at that time. So, it's a smear of blood from the time that Mr. Mason was killed two months ago. Something else is coming back to me now. Mr. McGilded was also wearing leather gloves that night. I mean, if you're going to start stabbing someone, you might as well, right? Now I ask you, what good what good-hearted soul would rush into, wouldn't rush in to help a fellow bleeding from the stomach? I wasn't about to start worrying about my gloves now, was I? I reached out to give the man a hand. It certainly does look like a leather glove thumbprint. But we know that Mr. McGilded had no injuries at the time anywhere on his body. 
from which we can conclude that any blood on the glove belonged to the victim, Mr. Mason. Naruhodo, you sound just like Mr. Sloan's. No, if I sounded like Mr. Sloan's, I would get every fact wrong about every sing single thing, but you know. Minus the quirky slip-ups, I hope. I mean, I did slip up once, though. Yes, I think you're right, Reno. Very well. Let's make a note of this. Okay. The blood analysis has been updated to the court record. Alright, well, I, th I think that's probably everything in here to check out, right? I guess we can head back into uh, the storeroom just to see if we have anything to say to Gregson. If possible. Eh, probably not. Let's see if we can go uh, check out uh, What's-His-Face. Let's see if Holmes is doing alright. Alright. Guess not. <laughs> guess there's something else in here that we gotta check. Let's see. Make sure there's no new topics. Alright. Representation papers. Three samples analysis with indicator development of Mr. Sloan. Redemption ticket. Hey. Hey there. You wanna talk to me about this? Oh, my manuscript. Mr. Sloan said he deposited it with Wendy Banks and he had uh and he had. But it's so strange. What is it about the particular story I worked so hard on? Why would Hurley say I can't publish it? I'm afraid I have no idea. All you can do is wait until he's ready to tell you, I suppose. Oh, maybe it's because Hurley isn't uh, isn't in it enough. Maybe I didn't give him enough good lines. Yeah, maybe. I wish I could say this definitely isn't the reason, but I mean I can't. Hmm. Okay. Green, purple, blue. Anything to check on here? Mr. Winnie Banks appears to have used the back of this photograph to write out a redemption ticket. He's written it very neatly, but still, perhaps he ran out of paper so had to use it, anything he had to hand. It's hard to know what the front of the- uh, fuck. It's hard to know what front- can't even read. It's hard to know what the front and what the reverse side now. I'm sorry, did it what? I had a moment there. All right. That's gotta be everything in here, yeah? I don't think I'm missing anything. Like, I tried to look at this shattered glass over here, but I guess we can't. Hmm. Yeah, nothing stands out. Guess I can just move on back to the storeroom. Maybe I gotta give Gregson something. But first, let me have another look-see. How is the gun not added into evidence? That's what I'm worried about right now. Hmm. Let's see. Well, before Leo, representation papers. Do I? I. I would assume that. I would assume that we don't have to hand it to him because we're already at the crime scene. And I don't really want to hand him the manuscript, because I don't think we're supposed to be going, you know, supposed to be just handing that shit out. I'm trying to check if there's any blood there. Hmm. Hmm. 
Mr. Moneybags appears to have used the back of this photographic to write out... Why the fuck do I keep saying photographic? Back of this photograph to write out a redemption ticket. Written very neatly, but perhaps ran out of paper. Okay. It's hard to know what's the front and what's the reverse side now. Inspector hmm. Gregson, can you give me your opinion about this? I guess I can try giving him the fucking manuscript. I don't think Irish would like that, but, uh, you know. Maybe we'll find some sort of insight into something if he has a quick little peruse at it. Is that what I think it is? Your ladyship's latest? Yes, my latest story. It's called The Hound of the Baskervilles. A most fascinating title, your ladyship. Fascinating! And I, uh, I suppose... Would there be any mention of my humble self in the, ta in the, in the title this time? Uh, good question. I really can't remember. I see, I see. Well, why would your ladyship? I'll just always await its publication with eager antis anticipation. You didn't worry, Inspector. I'm sure if you appear... <laughs> if you appear... Fuck, I can't read. If you appear, that's a word. You would be doing something you'd be doing anything particularly remarkable. You looking to be arrested in sunshine? <laughs> you looking to be arrested, sunshine? Maybe. Maybe a little bit. I didn't mean it like that. And even if I did, you wouldn't have bitten her ladyship's head off, would you? Hmm. What about the blood samples? Nothing? I'm really getting nothing out of this, huh? And how do we pull up people of interest again? I don't... I'll hand it to him again, I guess, but... Yeah, I don't think we need to show him that. I'm a little stumped here. A little stumped. <laughs> Man was about to arrest him for slandering his street cred. Alright. Uh, how do I pull up people? Hmm, I guess I can't pull up people in an investigation. Is there really nothing else in here? You gotta be kidding me. Then maybe I just show shit to Iris, I guess. I guess Gregson's not really gonna help out much. Let's see, Iris. What can I give you? I gave you this already. Manuscripts. Talk about the blood samples. The way you can identify a difference in people's blood like this is amazing. You really are a genius, Iris. I know. I am. If Hurley and I put our minds to it, we could really shake up British chemist, uh, chemist, uh, God damn it, chemist and alchemist. Thank you. You could shake up Japan's lawyers and judges. Could you, Mr. Nanahara? No, oh, for sure, for sure. Even if I didn't intend to. Okay. Well, nothing new came of that. Hmm. Are you sure that? <clears throat> what the fuck am I missing in here? Oh, what? What the hell is this? This officer has been staring intensely, <laughs> intently at this wall since before we came here. Shh, keep it down. Oh, sorry. There's a major clue here. Really? Then we must tell Gregsy at once. But as soon as I report it, that'll be it. I'll be struck. Oh, I'll be struck. I'll be stuck here ever longer. Can't even. Can't even fucking read. Stuck here? What do you mean? I haven't been. <laughs> I haven't been home in two days already. 
I need another constable to relieve me and take over my shift. Uh, okay. That doesn't stop us from investigating, though, does it? No, I suppose not. I'm fairly sure it wasn't the calendar he was peering at. Okay, then what? Alright. Can I... Hold up. Is there anything, like, on the outside that I can look at? That might help a little bit or something? I guess not. Nothing really seems to stick out. Still so Scotland Yard carriage outside of Windy Banks. I never imagined we'd be investigating a case so close to our home. Poor Iris. I'm sorry. I was there. I should have done more. Like, got shot. <laughs> I'm not gonna forgive Holmes for that. He's all like, Quick, Ryanosuke, after them! And I'm like, yes, wait a minute. I got, They got a gun. <laughs> what am I gonna do? None of this is your fault, Reno, so please don't apologize. But I... It's the criminals who are to blame for all this. So let's investigate. Okay. Hmm. Check the counter again. Ledger's open on the counter. Blah blah blah. Hmm. What am I missing? This is the only thing I haven't really showed her. Oh, I really don't like boring things. Yes, I know. I know you don't. Like, I would imagine the only thing I'm missing is, like, the camera. Right? That, that he would set up, but... I don't... I don't know. I, I can't find it. <laughs> And I think this is the only thing I haven't showed Gregson, right? So might as well. I'm Inspector. What do you make of this? Oh. What are we here then? A redemption ticket for the article deposit here. Looks like someone ran out of the office stationery and wrote the ticket on whatever paper they had on hand. Yes, this is to get Mr. McGild uh, to Mr. McGildlet's overcoat. The one that the little driver turned up with yesterday. Driver, my bad. Diver. Driver? Diver? Whatever. No, actually, no, it's not. Really? Think you better think you know better than me? No, I didn't mean that. Reno's right, Greg Z. It isn't the same ticket. Of course it isn't, of course. I never doubted you, your ladyship. So well what's this all about then, if I might be so bold as to ask? This is a second ticket. A second one? Seems that Mr. McGilden, in fact, had another article in storage here at Windy Banks. Is that right? If I think we need to discuss this further with the inspector, Mr. Wait, what? I think we need to discuss this for. Okay, yeah, that's kind of what we're doing. Oh, good, because he's ever so easy to talk to. This ticket was in one of the pockets of Mr. McGilded's overcoat. You mean to tell me? Yes. There was more than just the music box disc, it seems. Hmm. I should have insisted on the lads, take, uh, lads taking it back to the yard and examining it properly. Well, according to the details on this ticket, Mr. McGilded deposited another article here with Mr. Wendy Banks. Yes. I can see it written here. A small box. Is it that small box on the counter right there? Do you have any idea where it is, Gregsy? Any idea at all? It's another article belonging to Mr. McGilded. It could be an important clue. Well, uh, yeah. I suppose it could be. Please, stop looking at me with those big, terracoise eyes. 
all full of hope and expectation. It's too much pressure. I'll lose my marbles, I will. I'll go barking. This is no time for dog impressions, Inspector. That's enough sauce from you. <laughs> Thanks for the sauce. That's enough sauce from you, Sunshine. I'm a saucy boy. What do you expect? There's one thing that springs to mind. According to this ticket, the redemption details already passed, hasn't it? Details? Why'd I say details? Deadline. My bad. Oh yes, of course. Articles are only held for two months. So the small box will no longer be here. What about that small box behind you? That's right. It's been forfeited. Which means it could be on the shelves in front of the shop. Or behind you. <laughs> yes. The shelves in front. You must search them at once. You're wasting your time. Oh? There are dozens of little boxes out there. Hundreds, even. We can't possibly know which one might have been McGilded's, and information's not written in the ledger. I mean, if we're talking about McGilded here, right? Considering that, uh, that he carved his fucking name onto his knife, I guess, maybe, or whatever the hell that thing was. Like, pretty sure we'll find something. Some sort of initials, somewhere. Well, I think we should at least have a look, just in case. Of course, your ladyship, of course. Very sensible of you, I'm sure. This is getting old. Nice clock jump scare. That was cool, I guess. Nearly jumped out of my skin there. How could Mr. Winniebake set up such a wicked trap? I doubt he set it out to scare anyone. Is that really the time? I think perhaps we should pay Gina another visit soon. Oh. Her trial is tomorrow. You must establish whether or not you will be defending her. I think we should ask her one more time. Maybe she changed her mind. Don't you remember right now? You told her she could rip us. She she can rip up the res <laughs> the representation papers if she didn't want you to be her lawyer. Really? Did I say that? Yes, you did. Okay. The deadline for submitting the paperwork is fast approaching. In that case, we better hurry back to the prison and talk to Gina. Yeah, we can finally leave this area. Back to the prison. Sixteenth of April, five forty-one p.m. Local prison cell thirteen. Hey, Gina. Good, you're back. Huh? The police must have finished questioning her then. Oh, how was it, Jeannie? Was it awful? Eh? Oh, uh, didn't bother me. Thank you for the papers you signed before. And then we were able to investigate the Wendy Banks. Oh, right. See. No spoilers? Well, yeah, that's expected when cars don't exist. Okay. <laughs> How would spoilers then? You know what? That's right. I guess spoilers would uh just be considered the uh, horse's backside. Don't you want to know how we got on? We've, we've been ever so busy. What's the point of asking? I don't know, just out of curiosity, I guess. <laughs> By the way, welcome to the stream, Outlander. Hope everything's going fine. Have I played the previous AA? Actually, I have. I played uh, last year. Was it last year? Last year. Yeah, I want to say last year was my first time playing uh, the Phoenix Wright trilogy. Which, if you want... You can check out the whole entire thing on the YouTube, which is on the screen. Yeah, but yeah, I did um I did a blind playthrough of all that, right? And gotta say, loved it. Thank you for the follow, Outsider. I loved it, right? Of course, there are some cases that I love more than others, but overall, I loved the whole entire trilogy. It was pretty great. 
And, you know, for the years, I always wanted to sit down and play Ace Attorney. It's just that I never had time to. And, you know, last year was a good time to do it. It was also great because uh, instead of doing it all in, like, one, I, uh, I separated the games apart. So I did them, like, a couple of months away from each other. So whenever, um, you know, when I was done with the first Ace Attorney and then we went to Justice for All, it was a nice reunion with, like, Maya and all, like, Maya and... Um, you know, Mia, Maya, and Pearl. Pearl was introduced in the second game, right? She wasn't in the first game. So then meeting Pearl, and then after that, you played the third game, and you're like, yeah, it's all great. It's nice. It felt good. I loved it. I loved every moment of it. Won't change what everyone's saying that I did it. Okay. That's not... Hmm. Gina, I came to ask you for your final decision. Hmm? What decision? About tomorrow's trial. Will you let me defend you or not? Come on, Gina. You know you want me to defend you. I'm awesome. I must submit the paperwork now if I like Mr. Naruhoto to represent you. I mean, if you like Mr. If I like. If you like Mr. Naruhoto. Right, I see. She really lost her fight all of a sudden. Did they make a deal with you? Are they asking you to plead guilty? But I know what it feels like. The worry is just so hard to bear. They didn't strike a deal with you, did they? Dude, this is one of your favorite games of all time. This one? I gotta say, so far, well, at least when it came to... Which trial was it? It was the, um... There was a certain part in the game that I was kind of like a little lackluster on. For some reason I can't... For some reason I guess it escaped my mind. <laughs> there was a... What part was it? Damn it. It wasn't the boat. The boat part was pretty interesting. Um... I don't know. I'm trying to like pinpoint it. There was definitely like a certain part of the game that, that I felt like a bunch of nothing was just happening. Right? Maybe it was the first trial. Oh yeah, no, I think it was the first trial. Yeah, the McGilded trial. I just felt like, felt like they were just, you know, Ace Attorney has always done this, at least from what I've experienced. Like they kind of hold your hand a lot, but the first trial with McGilded, it like, I really didn't feel nothing in it, right? Like, I just kind of was going through the motions. But then the last trial I did with the, you know, the, uh, what you call it? The, uh, Japanese man, the Nipponese man, right? I like that one. I think that one was fun. And of course, the first trial, too, you know, getting in the groove of things again, that was fun. Especially when they're like, oh, we're going to let her go with a misdemeanor. And I'm like, what? She frames me for murder and gets away with a misdemeanor? Are you kidding me? Whatever. Um. By the way, am I playing English or Japanese voice? This is the English voices. I mean, it's only for the cutscenes, right? The entire game as in combined with the second game. Oh yeah, yeah, that's definitely what I heard. I heard that uh, the second game like lifts up the first game, right? But in terms as as like the first game itself right now, because I'm not sure when I'll do the second game. But in terms of the first game right now, I would say that, I don't know, I'll probably have to go back on all the cases to see which one I like or hate the most, but right now, right now I just feel like, I feel like the game is stalling, I guess, I guess that's the word I'm looking for. I don't know, but I definitely heard there were way worse Ace Attorneys than this, I heard like one of the, uh, one of the uh, Apollo games were just bad that people didn't like. What was it called? Like Spirits or something? Spirits Awaken or something? I don't fucking know. Excuse me. I remember people like complaining about that at some point. All right then, blimey. Give it a rest with the mize, Iris. So, come on then, fill us in. Who done it? Unfortunately, we don't know that yet. You don't say. We don't know yet, Gina. But Mr. Narahodo and all of us know that you're innocent of this crime. 
And while we haven't have yet... Wow, I can't speak. And while we haven't yet managed to work out who the real culprit is, there's a number of interesting facts that we have managed to establish. Oh yeah? Like what? Well, for example, the reason for you being there in the first place. I think I know now why you broke into Winder ba Winder? Wow. Windy Banks at night. Looks like I'm gonna have to take some evidence that clearly reveals the reason. And thus, and, and thus, and thrust it in Gina's face. Or should I say present it to her calmly, I suppose. <laughs> Alright. Representation in court. We already have the representation papers and other documents we need. All we have to do is hand them to the court clerk. That is, if you'll allow me to represent you in court tomorrow. Nah, don't bother. Genie. Rip him up and chuck him, would ya? Them representation papers or whatever they're called. This cell ain't fancy enough to have been. So, what would you do in court tomorrow? I'll be fine on my own. I don't think you will be. Look, it don't matter. What's gonna happen is gonna happen. This is one stubborn pickpocket. Come on, Gina. Come on, Gina. We're friends, right? Check this out, by the way. We found this in Mr. Wendy Bank's storeroom. The manuscript of Iris's latest story. Huh? Oh, right. Well, that's good then. Let's see. So, dudes, you probably won't believe me, but last weekend there was a small anime convention, wasn't it? Uh. Fuck, why can't I remember the name of the convention? Fucking, uh. Anaheim? Was it Anaheim? Was it, was it that one? I mean, not as big as Comic Con, and there was a small event where you could bring your favorite games and have it, and have to present it to convince the other people. I legit took the game with me, and my, <laughs> my fucking surprise, I ain't shitting. The fucking voice actor of Ryunosuke was there in another lens for a weekend. <laughs> I was shitting myself. There was no other voice actor, but he was there. Jesus. So, like, you're presenting it to him, and he's like, OBJECTION! And you're like, what? <laughs> Stop it! Curiously, the storeroom at Wendy Banks showed no sign of being ransacked for items or values or the like. In the Netherlands? Hmm. I'm trying to remember. Because I'm not like a big con guy. I don't go to conventions that much. Mainly because I just never have time to. That and like... That and like the one time I went to like a con, I just walked around and I was like, man... Yo, y'all motherfuckers need to buy some deodorant. Jesus. <laughs> that and, you know, the whole coronavirus thing. A little, still a little shifty on in a bit. Um, Anime Con is what it was called. But it's in the Netherlands, a.k.a. Europe. Oh, you mean Europe, where Resident Evil is taking place, where they clearly speak Spanish. <laughs> where it's like, guys, what the fuck? Somewhere in rural Europe. <laughs> Okay, Resident Evil 4, whatever you say. But yeah, no. That's pretty cool. Does the uh does the voice actor live out there in the Netherlands or was he just going there? Maybe uh maybe they had like a uh a panel or something for like something else they did voice work for. Nah, he was just going? Alright, cool. That's cool, right? Like you hear things like that, like um like uh uh, fucking, what's the actress for Lori Strode? It's, um, why can't I remember her name? Why can't I remember her name? Her and her whole entire family, they go to comic cons and stuff like that. So it's nice to just see, nice to see that it's like, oh man, these fucking, these awesome, cool celebrities are nerds too. Uh, Amy Lee Curtis, right? Is that, is it Amy Lee Curtis that does, uh, Lori Strode? It's Amy Lee Curtis, right? I'm not crazy about that. 
Yeah, fucking, uh, she goes to, like, cons with her whole family and stuff like that. And, um, is it Amy Lee Curt? Amy? Amy Lee Curtis, no, what, what's her name? Jamie Lee Curtis, something. Let me look that up real quick. <laughs> fucking, I don't know why I'm so bad at remembering celebrities and stuff like that. Lori Strode, actress. Yeah, Jamie Lee Curtis. Amy Lee Curtis. Why did I say Amy Lee Curtis? Yeah, she goes to cons and stuff like that. And, like, Terry Crews, he's, like, a huge fucking PC gamer. So, like, that's cool. Like, uh, recently, I was just, I guess I was just letting videos play on YouTube or whatever. And I was, like, listening to D&D &D campaigns and stuff like that. And on, like, um, Critical Role, I think, the one with Matt Mercer, um, fucking, he did, like, a, uh, like, a couple of campaigns with, um, with like some celebrities and like Terry Crews was there and like just watching Terry Crews be like legitimately happy about playing Dungeons and Dragons. I'm just sitting there. I'm like, here's this fucking big, huge dude that everybody loves. And he's like, yeah, look at these fucking figurines. I got a natty 20. Hell yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, that's how you do it. That's cool. Never did panels before. We talked for a bit and such like the game was his first ever role in voice acting. So he ain't super well known. He loved, uh, he loved how one guy actually took the game with him and talked about it. Got your copy signed by it. Holy shit. That's fucking awesome. And then you're going to look back on it and you'll be like, this is where it all started. When you finally see his name everywhere like he's fucking, like he's Troy Baker and uh, Nolan North. But hopefully he won't be getting all of that NFT shit like Troy Baker does. Fucking Troy Baker and your fucking NFTs, dude. He's like, listen, I'm just a, I'm just a, I'm just a creator. It's like, shut up, shut up. I'm just an artist. Shut up. All right. Curiously, the storeroom at Wendy Banks showed no signs of being ransacked for items of value or the like. With one exception, the box filled with the ho uh, the box, box, damn it, the box file that housed this manuscript. Box file. That's a weird way of wording that. It was you, wasn't it, Gina? You broke open the box containing the manuscript last night. You were determined to find out whether or not the Hound of the Baskervilles was really there. That's the real reason you broke into the storeroom last night, isn't it? Why don't you tell us what happened? There's his manuscript. Alright, yeah. This Baskerville story. It's the latest Shlom's adventure, right? But it ain't been printed yet. Like, I gotta say, I will say, like, after playing this game, I'm not sure when I'll do it, but I think at some point I do want to tackle the uh, Herlock Shlom's trilogy of games, like the newer versions. Because I have touched Crimes and Punishment before. Crimes and Punishments. Um, I have touched that before, haven't beaten it, and haven't really gotten that far, but one thing that I did remember, one thing that I do remember about the game is that you can actually just straight up get like the answers wrong and the game will just continue. You can straight up just like do all this work, get it wrong, and then the game will be like, yeah, you got it wrong. Well, whatever, that was your one shot. <laughs> you didn't get all the evidence. And to be honest, I actually like that, right? I mean, LA Noir did that too, but it wasn't, it wasn't like, that crazy the way that the Sherlock the uh, Herlock wow the way that the Sherlock Slums games does I can't even fucking say his name anymore Jesus the way that the Sherlock Holmes thank you Ace Attorney for fucking up my brain the way that they did that I think it's I think it'll be pretty interesting and I heard that the newer um like the episodic one that they're doing I heard that it was pretty good so maybe I'll check that out in the future or something like that all right, the Baskerville story, and the latest Shlums adventure, right? But it ain't been printed yet, so I figured it gotta be worth a fair few pieces of silver, right? <clears throat> oh yes, at least 5,000 pounds. What? So, you intended to sell Iris's manuscript, did you? <laughs> Legit the first guy in the world to get the signed copy. That's awesome. It's a, it's a Switch version, right? <laughs> I'm not crazy. There is, there's like a physical version for the PS, for the PlayStation, right? 
There's physical versions for that, right? No, Jenny. How could you? What? Wait, no. Hang on. Of course I wasn't going to sell it. All I wanted to do was find out if the manuscript, or whatever you call it, really was there or not. That's the only reason I went to that place. For Iris' sake. Isn't that right? Um, you know why you've done it from the start, Gina? Of course we did. But... I knew you wouldn't do anything mean like that, Jenny. I just knew it. Well, uh, okay. When I saw the manuscript in the storeroom, it reminded me of what you were saying the night before. Grown-ups do a lot worse than that, believe me. Barefaced liars, a lot of them. You just ain't realize it yet. I'm telling you, that manuscript ain't at Windy Banks. You soon see it if you had a look. If I'm honest, I have wonder if Hurley's telling me the truth sometimes. I mean, that I sometimes wonder if I might have hidden my manuscript some- wait, what? I mean that I sometimes wonder if he might have hidden my manuscript somewhere, somewhere I don't know. Even though it's wrong of me to doubt him. Oh, Jeannie. That was so sweet of you. Alright, alright. I gotta say, I'm a little jealous that everyone here knows at least something about the manuscript. And I'm sitting here with the manuscript in my hand, I'm like, what the fuck is this story about? <laughs> I'll tell you why I did it. Just stop looking at me like that, Iris. It probably has to do with some sort of ongoing investigation. It wasn't because of Iris. That's not why I did it. It's just... I wanted to know the truth, that's all. He wanted to know Mr. Sloan's was being honest. We had really deposited the manuscript at Wendy Banks. It's like I told you the night before. I never had a father. But Iris, Lot ain't the. Lot ain't, wow. But Iris Lot ain't like mine. She got her dad, only she can't see him. Woof. <laughs> Woof. Jesus! Don't look at me like that, Mikotova. I reckon that's gonna be harder. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot harder when you find out what happened. That's why she's that's why she's writing her stories. They're about her dad, really. That's what it sounded like to me anyways, last night when I was listening to what you were saying. Stories about daddy. You mean they're not the adventures of the great detective? So much as the adventures of a great detective and his trusty partner? I mean, yeah, that's, that's kind of what the Sherlock Holmes series is about. There's a lot of perspectives being told by the eyes of Watson. Well, that's how I see it. Like, even the, uh, even like the show that they had on Netflix or whatever. Fucking, I don't even think it was a Netflix show. I think it was like, I forgot who fucking, what, what studio was head of that show but even that one was told through the eyes of Watson well that's how I see it you're so thoughtful and so kind Jenny yes we never thought any different did we look give it a rest will ya I ain't all this chummy I hate all this chummy nonsense do you hear I hate it I don't trust no one right that's how I work because if you don't trust no one, you can't, they can't let you down. So leave me alone. Go on. Scraper. Scrapper. Scraper. Why are you so mean to me, Jenny? I hadn't noticed until now, but it's unmistakable. Right there, on the both of those sleep. Oh, what? She has blood on her sleeves? Some very suspicious red stains. Dried up blood, even. What? What are you looking at me like that? I think it might be worth presenting some of our other findings. Iris? Spray her down. <laughs> Goes her.
The stains on the sleeve of your new coat, Gina. Uh, Gina. They're blood, aren't they? Not that I know whose blood yet. What? Blood? Mr. Narahodo! You don't appear to have any obvious wounds yourself, though. So could it be blood that splattered from Mr. Winnie Banks when he, when he was shot last night? Let's not beat around a bush here. This trusty friend of mine will get results much faster than anything. Eh? Take it easy, Iris. Put the gun down. Don't move, Jenny. I'm gonna shoot. Green. Okay, that's a darker purple than before. Oh. Oh my. You're... You're covered in blood. Jesus. What the... Forget the fucking sleeves. The whole coat's covered in blood. Of course. The black color of the fabric was making the stains... <clears throat> was masking the stains. That's why we haven't seen them until now. And the blood has reacted with the chemical to turn purple. Which matches one of the samples we've already collected perfectly. What? <laughs> you okay, outsider? You having a having a stroke? Or, you having a stroke out there? <laughs> I don't know what you're saying. Are you saying, "Am I right? Am I right?" <laughs> see. Just wish my blood would turn green. Oh yeah, your blood turns green and then it drops in a soda, a fucking soda bottle, and then next you know you're killing Stan Lee via poison. That's what happened in the Incredible Hulk movie. People forget that Stan Lee drunk a soda bottle and died because he drunk the Hulk's blood. <laughs> he had like a heart attack or some shit. <laughs> yes. Now let's see. We have the purple blood. Ah, yes. It was the brickmaker, Mr. Mason, the victim of the murder case two months ago. <laughs> we don't mention that one. Oh, you mean the one where he does that weird stomach shit? That's the Fox movie. I knew it. What? What are you all about? The victim? What, what do you mean? Man, you are covered in that man's blood. It's a rather uncomfortable situation, Mr. Nahodo, but I think it makes it makes things quite clear. I mean, the Omnibus case is finally solved. The truth about who really murdered the brickmaker, Mr. Mason, is revealed. Hey, Sasato, I want to go back to where Mr. McGilden looked at me and said, Do you think I did it? And I just looked at him and I said, Yeah. Yeah, you did. You 100% did just by looking at you. Why? Like, that's the second time that I did that. Right? Because I remember, uh, wait, which one was it? Was it Justice for All? I think it was Justice for All. Where, like, where, like, uh, one of the cases was, uh, what, what was the dude's name? Magnus or something? Max Maximus or some bullshit? I don't fucking remember. But he was, like, a movie star or some shit. And, like, I remember, like, as the, as the fucking, as the trial was starting, I just go, I just sit there and I'm like, I'm like, at some point, one of our defendants have to be guilty, right? Because not everyone can be innocent. And then, as I say that, we're going down the fucking investigation and shit. And then he, the dude turns out to be super evil, and then everyone was like, Why the fuck did you call it out so early? <laughs> Why did you do that? Jack Hammer, thank you. Fucking... Was it Jack? Yeah, that was the evil one, right? The guy with, like, the... Did he have, like, cuts on his eye or some shit? But fucking, uh... Yeah, I, we just start that. I'm like, at some point, one of these guys have to be guilty, right? And then we had, like... And we're gonna have to defend a guilty man. Right. And now he didn't have. Hmm. That's the second game. Jackhammer. Who's Jackhammer? Isn't Jackhammer's the one with uh, Will Powers? I'm thinking of the other guy. I'm thinking of the guy who's like. I think he wore like a red jacket or some shit. He had like, like brownish blonde hair, like dirty blonde hair or something like that. And he would like fucking flip his hair back and he would become an evil genius. <laughs> Some bullshit like that. It's been a while. Again, it's been like 
that was all that all happened last year <laughs> like but i remember just like within the same trial i'm just not trial even before the trial started i'm just sitting there and i'm like i'm like someone has to be guilty right and then as i'm saying that people in the chat are just like can you, you motherfucker yeah matt thank you what did i say his name was maximus or something yeah fucking matt yeah that guy matt on guard <laughs> in guard in grade on guard i wear a fuck these names are weird <laughs> all right so i love like i'm two for two on that whole entire situation of just looking at someone and going you're guilty you are so guilty <laughs> <laughs> you know, you mean Death of the Actor in the first game. Yeah, the first one was Will Powers, right? Like, that one. Like, that one, it's like... I like Will. That's one thing I like, like... That's one thing I really liked about the Ace Attorney trilogy, is that, like... Yeah, at some point, you kind of look at it and you go, How can the same fucking people be involved in so many things? Right? But at the same time, it's nice, like, to catch up with some of the characters. Like, it was really nice seeing a lot of heart again, right? I like Lada. She's cool. I like her. Right? And then every five seconds, you're like, fucking Wendy Old Bags is here again. Jesus, fuck. When when don't you appear? Get away from me. <laughs> it's nice to, like, uh, see them. The Max dude is the wizard. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, that guy was super innocent. <laughs> that guy was super innocent. He was innocent, and then I was looking at the girl, and I'm like, I'm like, she has something to do with this, right? And then, you know, because I thought, I'm not going to lie, I thought she was a little evil. But then it's like, no, she wasn't evil, just really fucking stupid. God, just looking back on all the... At least, oh man, now that I started reminiscing about it, it's like... Every time... <laughs> every time... Every time I think about that one person, you know the person, that one person where you just sit there and you go, and you just get mad. You just get mad just by the name. Dahlia. Fucking. Mm, damn it. <laughs> I can't help but get this feeling of rage and anger. Fucking Hawthorne. I hate you. I hate you. Such a good fucking villain. Such a good villain. I hate her so much. <laughs> we can see now that the victim's blood is all over Mr. McGilded's overcoat. But in the trial two months ago, the defendant said this in his testimony. Yeah, but I like I like checking back in on the uh, characters and stuff like that. But that was something that someone told me about was like the uh, writers of Phoenix Wright. They kind of want to not rely on seeing the same characters over and over again, so that's why you don't see you don't see Iris again, right? Which sucks because it's like it's like it's like come on, man, Phoenix deserves a happy ending. <laughs> Since they kind of like squashed the whole Maya and Phoenix thing, right? And then every time I look at Francesca, and I'm just like. I'm like, she's the same age as Maya? Get the fuck out of here. She's a grown-ass woman. Are you kidding me? What the hell have they been feeding her? <laughs> but in a trial two months ago, the defendant said this in his testimony. Now I ask you, what good-hearted soul wouldn't rush in to help a fellow bleeding from his stomach? I wasn't about to start worrying about my gloves now, was I? I reached out to give, him the, to give the man a hand. But if you look at the overcoat now, it's clear. These stains could have, uh, could have arisen. <clears throat> stains could have arisen from Mr. McGilden trying to pull the victim to his feet. Now, if that was what Harley, if that what was, uh, fuck, I can't even read. Now, if that was what really happened, the blood wouldn't have been splattered all over the front of his coat. The only explanation for this pattern of blood. Is it splattered all over McGilded's coat when he stabbed the victim in his stomach? Man, just thinking back on like the uh, the Big Berry Circus trial, like the ending of that was, I mean, it was expected, like I expected it, but dude, it still it still was sad because it was just all just so much mis misfortune in that one, just so many like 
things working against those people. I'm like, damn, that sucks. I tried to run from the truth for so long, but there's no escaping it now. True culprit in this case, Mr. Mason's killer, Magnus McGilded. Super tired, you're gonna hop off chat, so... <laughs> uh, what? Super tired, I'm gonna hop off chat, so if I don't stay, A. <laughs> A. Don't stay a bit longer, thanks for the stream. Alright. Well, that's fine, thank you for stopping by, I appreciate it. Mr. Nalahoto, that horrible case is solved at last. And I, oh, by the way, I just want to throw a heads up, um, for, uh, the, uh, what you call it, for the YouTube channel, right? So, I was going through my, com I was going through my PC and stuff like that, right? And, <laughs> I really don't like sim button below text. I don't like touch screens on phones, honestly, I fucking hate it. But, um, yeah, I was looking through the PC or whatever, and... I'm literally at a I'm literally at a point where I'm just looking at like all all the vods I have and everything I have to fucking um like like render out and you know edit and all that shit. And I'm just looking at it that with the other playthroughs I'm trying to do right now on YouTube. And I'm like these are taking a lot of space, especially the Persona 4 playthrough cuz that that's a really big that that's a really big playthrough. Um so for the upcoming for the next upcoming like week or two I'm just going to be throwing up a bunch of videos on the YouTube, just like all the VODs, really. Like, usually I try not to throw them all at once because I'm not trying to, like, overwhelm anybody or anything like that. But, dude, fucking, there's just too much taking space on my computer, and I got to get rid of this shit. So I just fucking, I'm just going to fucking mass upload that shit, like, for real. So there's just going to be a lot of Persona VODs, the Kingdom Hearts playthrough, the conception playthrough that's gonna get thrown up there, uh, Simulacrum, Ratchet and Clank, fucking, uh, what else is sitting on my goddamn PC? Uh, the Pokemon Marathon's gonna be continuing and shit like that, because now I can actually continue with that with, hey you Pikachu, hello Pikachu. Um, I, I rubbed my N64 while I said that, because it's right in front of me. But, like... You know, that all those are just going to get mass upload. I try to trickle them out just so that just so that I don't overwhelm people because those are like hours and hours long, especially the fucking Persona 4 playthrough. But like it's just taking too much space on my computer. It honestly is. And I think that was also one of the reasons why my PC was running a little slow last time because because uh, because it was just filling up my computer. So I got to get rid of that shit like pronto. So if you check the if you check the YouTube or whatever and you just see a bunch of videos just going up out of nowhere, fucking just pay no mind to it. They're just there now. <laughs> like that's what's going to happen. I also got to continue the vampire uh the vampire or whatever the fuck that however the fuck you pronounce that game. I got to continue that playthrough. All right. So that's going to get thrown out there. I helped the man walk free from the trial. Well, he's dead now, so he got what's coming to him. I used all that twisted testimony and all the sham evidence to prove his innocence. How could I have let that happen? All right, good night. Also, thanks again for letting you vent on Twitter. Yeah, totally. I'm going to check that out after the stream because I got some time. Bruno, did you believe him, though? Did you believe Mr. McGilder was innocent? Fuck no, I said it to his face. What are you talking about? I believed. No, I didn't. Or rather, I think I was trying to believe. I wanted to. Because believing in those you represent in court is a defense lawyer's greatest weapon. A weapon for mass destruction. Before we came to Great Britain, a great friend of mine taught me a valuable lesson. You mean, Kazuma-sama. Listen, Ryunosuke. We lawyers are only human. We can't know for sure what the truth is and what is a lie. 
which is why we must resort to our primary weapon. An unwavering belief in our clients that all we that's all we really have. Unwavering belief. Only when we truly believe that our clients tell us uh, what our clients tell us can we fight with everything we have for the case. In any battle, there can be no victory without faith. So, I believe in you, unwaveringly. <laughs> What's funny, Gina? Core. Core? What? Core! <laughs> Started speaking like a Pokemon. Core, core. Core! Sounds like this empire of Japan you come from. Core? What? I still. Okay, whatever. Everyone must be soft. Well, come on. Look at the mess it got you into. Believing in the bog trot bog trotter? Is that like slang for shithead? <laughs> yes, I inadvertently helped a murder walk free. Well, at least you've learned your lesson now, eh? Believing in people never worth it. Someone's always stab you in the back in the end. As soon as you let your guard down, you had it. Take a leaf out of my book. Believe no one. Get hurt by no one. Gina, may I ask you something? What? I'd just like to make absolutely sure. What would you like for us to do with the representation papers for tomorrow's trial? How many times do I gotta say it? Rip them up in chunks and throw them away. Are you really sure that's what you want? I bet that's what... <laughs> I bet that's what he wants. Wait, what? I bet that's why he wants and all now. What? I can't... Your fucking accent makes me want to strangle you, Gina. Jesus. <laughs> I'm a believer lawyer over... <laughs> Mr. I'm a believer lawyer over there. I am a believer. I believe. Don't forget, it was me the trial. Uh, it was me in that trial two months ago. I led everyone up in Garden's path, didn't I? And you telling me you can't believe it? You can believe in me after that? Not likely. Well, Mr. Nadahodo, a lawyer's primary weapon is an unwavering belief in his clients. Ultimately, it comes down to whether or not I feel I can trust Gina after everything that happened. Sure, I can trust her. I mean, listen, when it came down to it and the guy was, like, pulling a gun out on us, she fucking trusted me enough to hand me the disc and told me to get the fuck out of Dodge. Gina? Let me say it again. Please allow me to represent you in tomorrow's trial. What do you have, baked? Not at all. You are not once admitted to committing the crime, have you? What's more, I believe that you're telling me the truth. Seriously. Mr. Naru- <laughs> Mr. Naru- Odo. <laughs> okay. Didn't you hear all I- uh, hear what I said before? I'm a born liar. Fibs just tip up- uh, Fibs just trip off my tongue. And I'm a- and I'm a diver, don't forget. I pulled the wool over your eyes two months ago and got you into all sorts of trouble. Why would you ever trust me now? I just don't get it. Gina? I do understand why you chose not to pull your, pull your trust into others. But, I assure you, there's more to this life than you realize. What do you mean? The world we live in. It's full of people you you would do very well to trust. People who won't ever let you down. It's true that I'm just a student of law, and I'm certainly lacking in courtroom experience. But I can promise you this. Whatever happens, happens. <laughs> whatever happens until the very until my very last breath. I'm completely on your side. What would you expect me to say to that?
Then it's decided. I'll take these papers now and carry out the necessary preparations for tomorrow's trial. It would be a shame to throw them away now after it's been pinned in with your name so beautifully. Do what you like. You Eastern lot are. I don't know what you are. I don't get you. Mikuraba has like the biggest mom energy of anyone, right? <laughs> she just fucking stops everything in the room. She's like, Gina. And she just perks up. Gina's like, what? <laughs> Gina takes, uh, Gina taking herself off the back of, wow, I can't even fucking read. Wow. Gina's taking herself off to the back of her cell. She never admitted, but I hope she feels relieved. That turned out all right in the end, I think. Whoever's hiding there, show yourself at once. Eavesdropping is is the height of cowardice. Is it, uh, is it Shlomes? Mrs. Sato. Somebody's there in the shadows. I can sense it. Somebody who wasn't there before. What? Shlomes? Is that you? Blimey, you're sharp, eh? Oh, Gregson. The hell are you doing? He's like, I rolled a natty 20 on my fucking stealth. <laughs> I suppose you were using one of those mystic Japanese arts. Wow, racist. Like the arts of stealth I've been hearing so much about. If anyone's been stealthy, it was you, Inspector. Gregsy? Might. Oh, dear me. I'm most terribly sorry, Your Ladyship. I didn't mean to startle you. How long have you been listening to our conversation? Good grief. Listening in? No, 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 no. I just got word that there was some visitors who were refusing to leave, even though it was after hours. I assure you, ladyship, I just arrived this very minute, not a moment earlier. That's all. Nothing untoward, nothing at all. After hours? Is it that late already? So then, I'll humbly excuse myself now, your ladyship. Ta-da! Toodaloo! Cheerio! Bye-bye! That's a lot of farewells. And not only one of and not one of them appropriate for her ladyship. Oh, but I wanted to have a chat. I'm I'm terribly sorry, but time's uh, time is pressing at the minute. Oh, I see. That's a shame. If I don't get this emergency at this wait, what? If I don't get this emergency at the Supreme Court, fuck! I can't even what now. If I don't get this emergency at the Supreme Court dealt with. Sharp, uh, sharpish, sharp, sharpish. Okay, Lord Strongheart will. Well, emergency. Lord Strongheart. N nothing. Forget I said anything. Anyways, <clears throat> I'm off. Goodbye. All right, Greg Z, If you have to, well, let's chat soon. Delighted. Charmed. Can't wait. If you please, my pleasure. That's a lot of pleasantries, and not one of them sounded sincere. Greg's so funny. He says such silly things. It's certainly entertaining to see an inspector of the police fawning to a ten-year-old. But anyways, I wonder what that emergency is at the Supreme Court. I must attend to the court's clerk office now before it closes. Yes, of course. Thanks, Mrs. Sato. Kindly escort Iris home now, Mr. Donahoto. I shall meet you there later. You know, Mikoto, but we've been around each other for like two, three months. Can we quit with the fucking, like, honorifics <laughs> for like once? I would just like to call you by your name. And so our investigation came to an end. Susara san went. Uh, Sasa went to file the necessary papers for my defense uh, for my de defense of Gina the following day. And then it hit me. I could no longer suppress the wretched feeling that I've been gnawing away at my insides. Tomorrow, Susana san will be leaving. Leaving Britain and making her way back to Japan.
Naruharo-san? It's been a very tiring day, has it? I do hope you're not too exhausted. What about you, Sasada-san? Today's been even more trying for you, I'm sure. Mr. Shlomo was shot before your eyes. Gina was arrested. All of the back, all of the back of the news that her father has fallen ill and that she must return to Japan at once. I hope your father recovers soon. Thank you for your kind words. What's the matter, Sasato? I wonder why it is that so many th thoughts rage in my head like a storm. And yet, I seem unable to find the words to express any of them. I know exactly what you mean. Anyways, I have one final task to complete as your judicial assistant. Once that is done, I shall make preparations for my departure tomorrow. What's that task? You're gonna... Are you going to tell me about the manuscript? One final task. Alright, going back to Japan. Let, let's work down the list. It's just two months. Uh, it was just been two months since we arrived in London. But we managed to establish this office. It was finally feeling as though we were settling in. I would be lying if I, felt, if I said I felt no regret. I'm so sorry, Susano-san. It's just so sudden. I really don't know what to think. I had no time to gather my thoughts. I know we've only been here for a short time, but... In my limited experience of the courtroom, I feel that I learned something. What should... And what would that be? It seems to me... There are many... There are many fissa... God. Facets. That's a word. There are many facets to people's personalities. Facets. And like a jewel, the light plays off them in complex patterns, illuminating their actions and their motives. But we see only... But we... God damn it. But we see only... But we see only see a small... What the fuck? <laughs> but we see only see a small number of total... F what the fuck? I'm having a stroke reading that. Okay. But we see, only see a small number of the total facets. And what is illuminated is only a part of the whole story. What lies in the shadows? What do those facets we cannot see look like? Perhaps there are some parts we'll never lay eyes on for as long as we live. That's so true. No, that's so Raven. <laughs> that was a stupid joke. Sometimes I feel as though I'm blind to so much. But I keep going. I keep hoping that one day it will be it will all become clear. That all the facets will be illuminated. And I'll finally understand how everything fits together. Not a I suppose what matters is that we keep our eyes open, keep moving forward. Even if uh, even if the way sometimes seems dark. It's amazing to think it's just been two months. You've grown so much. Susada with that big mom energy. Jesus. Sorry? I what? Oh no, <laughs> it was nothing. Unimportant. Alright. So what about tomorrow, Susada? Do you know what time you'll be leaving London in the mo- uh, Wow, I like bit my tongue also. Do you know what time you'll be leaving London in the morning? Yes, I picked up my ticket earlier. I shall be leaving here at 4 a.m. Ugh, that's early. I see. Well, I'll escort you to the station. Absolutely not. Sorry. I'm sure you realize why I couldn't possibly let you do that. You have a very important day ahead of you tomorrow. Gina's trial. Yes, I know, but... Every word you other will have the potential to determine Gina's fate. must get as much rest as possible. Even though, like me, I'm sure you'll find it hard to sleep. But please, for me, do try. Alright. For that big mom energy. So, you mentioned one final task a moment ago. 
What did you mean? Oh my, I nearly forgot. Please, I want you to have this. Your book? Your book of... of all that is holy? <laughs> Her book with the knowledge of a thousand gods? What is that? Some huge bundle of documents? It's my notes from the case two months ago. The murder, uh, the murder was... a uh, fuck. The murder that was committed on the Omnibus. The McGilda case? It seems to me that this case of Mr. Winniebank's murder, of which Gina is accused, is very much tied up with the Omnibus case, in ways that are not yet completely apparent. So I took liberty of... Con of consolidating... fuck. Consolidating my writings about the case for you. Okay. With everything else she had to think about. Sadasan still managed to do all this. And all neatly and laid out for me in her beautiful handwriting. It was my pleasure. I can only hope that it will bolster you in your case tomorrow for Gina. Thank you so much, Sadasan. I'll do my best to use it wisely. You really are the best judicial assistant in the world. Well, that's extremely flattering. <laughs> I love how she's the best assistant. Meanwhile, Phoenix Wright, the, like his descendant, has fucking Maya. <laughs> and Maya's just like, just like, yeah, I'm his assistant. I do absolutely nothing. Hmm, that I've been a complete failure. What do you mean you've been a failure? What are you talking about? Sorry, I, di I didn't quite catch what you said there. Oh, uh, ignore me. I was just mumbling to myself. Alright, we got the case notes now. And once I go to sleep, I won't see her again. Well, it's getting rather late. I think you should go to bed now, Naruhoto-san. I must finish packing up my things in my room. Sano-san, I... I wish you the very best of luck tomorrow. Good night. Wait! Th there's something I need to say. What? <laughs> what the hell? What? <laughs> what was that? A secret technique of mine. The Susato shutdown. Oh, come on! Shutdown! Please, I implore you. If we had to voice our goodbyes... Am I fucking be going unconscious? Why is my vision getting blurry? I wouldn't be able to hold back my tears. Am I blacking out? Susano-san. <laughs> she said, I said, get some rest. It truly had been a tiring day. On our feet for hours, getting Gina to open up to us and learning the truth about that nemesis. Of, what? Okay. About that nemesis of a case. Physically and mentally, I was exhausted. And yet the idea of sleeping seemed impossible. But I forced myself to close my eyes. And... As a, as a concophony of scenes of our lives here in London played through my mind, eventually my fatigue triumphed and I fell into a deep sleep. Damn, Susano. You didn't have to do me like that. Susano, wait, I have to tell you something. No! <gasps> yes, I quite understand. That is a great weight off my mind. Rest assured, I shall put everything in place exactly as we have discussed. 
Thank you so much. It's been an honor and a pleasure to be acquainted with you, Mr. Sloams. On the contrary, the pleasure's been all mine. I bid you farewell, and Godspeed. My dear madam. Damn, dog. <laughs> you gotta do me like that? All right. Save your current progress? Yeah, of course. I think that is an excellent spot to stop tonight's stream. Excellent. A good ending to it all. That and I have like maybe a couple of hours to do a couple of things right now, so I'm going to use those to do something else. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, how I did start to stream a little bit early tonight, so yeah, no, we're, we're going for about three hours, so. I think it's pretty, I think it's a pretty good uh, stopping point. But yeah, uh, not sure. Well, I mean, I am sure what I'm going to, what I'm definitely going to stream next. Uh, going back to the regular schedule, which even though it's not really that, you know, not that crazy. So next time, next time there'll be a definite stream, right? In the schedule, at least is uh, next week. It's all in the Twitch schedule and all that other bullshit. But maybe, maybe... Later today, if I have some time between mass uploading VODs and stuff on YouTube, um, I might come back and do a little bit of more Ace Attorney later today. But as of right now, I wouldn't have anything. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Wouldn't make like complete promises about it because there's still some other shit I have to do. But I think maybe. I think maybe I might do some more later today. Maybe. It's a high probability, right? But if I do, you can check out on Twitter. I'll definitely send a live notification. Or, of course, if you follow me and you have your notification set on Twitch, um, you know, you'll get the notification that I'm going live and stuff like that. But, yeah, next time I stream is going to be more Ace Attorney. And then, as for the YouTube, like I said earlier, just going to be uploading a bunch of shit. And one of the playthroughs that are going to get uploaded are it's from, like, a complete year ago, maybe even two years ago, because I never actually completed the playthrough. I still have to go back and stream the rest of it. But Conception, at some point, that's all going to get dumped on YouTube, like, pretty soon. And then, um, what else? What else is there that I want to say? Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for the YouTube. Yeah, the Pokemon Marathon, that's finally, the hiatus is done. That's finally going to continue, so we can move on to uh, the next main playthrough in the marathon, which is Hey You Pikachu. So that's going to be coming out sometime this week on the YouTube. So check that out if you're interested. And over here on Twitch, uh, you know, if you like what you see, consider following me. And if you really want to help out and make it possible so that I can stream m like more reliably in the future uh, for more days out the week, then uh, throw a quick sub, right? Once I get enough subs, I'll have enough, you know, I have enough reason to, to add like another day onto, um, what you call it, onto the schedule, like permanently. So I would really like to do that if possible. And of course, the other main thing with the uh, subs on Twitch or whatever, I would like to get a couple more emotes out there, to be honest, right? <laughs> I just kind of want that, you know? And what else? Yeah, if you have like an Amazon Prime account, you get like a free a uh, Twitch Prime sub or whatever the fuck. And if you don't have it set to anyone, you can kick that over to me if you want. Just a little, just a little, you know, PSA there, I guess. But I think that's everything I really want to say for now. There's not really too much to, like, update you guys on, you know, because I just got back into the swing of things because my PC is no longer being a bitch. Tonight, let, let's all have a round of applause for PC getting its shit together tonight because fucking the stream didn't get, like, fucking interrupted which is great so that's amazing thank you pc for not ruining my night and yeah so <clears throat> as always those who watch the uh who came and watch live thank you very much it's nice 
exchanging words with you, having a nice chat here and there. And people who are watching the VODs, I don't forget about you. So thank you for watching the VODs. If you can, head over to YouTube. That's where it's all going to be later. And, you know, please leave a like. You know, like, comment, subscribe, all the other bullshits. It helps out with the YouTube algorithm and all that dumb shit. And, yeah, that's pretty much it. So, once again, as always, I want to say thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Stay happy, stay healthy, and take care. I'm a chef, chef too.